Warning! The following content may contain elements that are not suitable for some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to the Bard's Playhouse Presents Tales from Shadow Valley, Season 4, Episode 3. Sign sure is coming to town. Thank you so much for joining us. Now let's bring in our wonderful cast. We have Eldritch as Khan, the bloody Ritzolo. Always great to be here. I don't know what to say this <laughs> time. Shane as Umbromancer Zavid. I don't know what to say either. I'm here, hi. El Elliot as Reese Guiltleaf, the Heartseeker. I've got a lot to say, but not a wig to wear. As always, I'm Lumby Bronzearm and will be your DM we're, for today. We're really selling this uh, this stream, yeah, aren't we're, we? We're, we're Anyone who's tuning energy. in, like, I wonder how this uh, you know actual play is, and we're just like, yeah, we're here, I guess. We're like, it's better than that, guys. Trust us. We're just a little tired. All right. It's like actually a lot more fun than that. In and this is uh, eighty-five. Became, yeah, Eight. eighty-five episodes in. The character that has committed to the bit of wearing the wig is just very tired today because um, they drove their girlfriend to the airport at four a.m. Yeah. <laughs> and but, when I started playing this campaign, I did not have a child, and now I have a baby. So things have changed, all right? A lot like, of stuff's gone down. It's been three years. I, I looked into it. It's been three years, almost to I the can't day. believe that. It's been I like two oh. years. It's been almost yeah. two years uh, it's in been a couple of months for me to be uh, it, it, Today is February yeah. 4th. Our first episode was February 7th, 2021. So it's been almost three years to the day. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that's fun. Well. Uh, but... As always, I'm Lumby Bronzearm, and we'll be your DM for today. Last time, Luxatumbra returned to Druma once more. Though their grueling adventures in the desert of Assyrian was long and harsh, their triumphant return was greeted with familiar faces and long overdue embraces. As they waited within the throne room of Castle Arion, Luxatumbra learned that their friend Queen Danny had eloped with her fiancé Bruce Mithralarm, making him the new sitting prince of Druma. Mythanar attempted to, re to regain all regale all with the tales of his newfound love of surfing as hearts danced around Reese's head. While catching up, a cackle of magical energy filled the chamber as a teleportation circle appeared upon the floor. When the smoke cleared, standing once more within her throne room was Queen Dany Arion, along with her brother Eredril, Grandmother Empress Talandia, Queen's Guard Demirius, and a menagerie of new pets. Palling around as though no time had passed at all, Luxatumbra instinctively knew what was needed. Fruity drinks at the beach! Mythanar at the lead, everyone readied themselves for a day of sand, surf, and sun. The stark contrast between the harsh desert of Assyrian and the lovely beach of Druma was not easy to miss. Having not had a drink in a month, Danny made a beeline to the nearest vendor, a sea star triton named Patricio Stella, who sold icy treats from his dire hermit crab, Barry. To the surprise of no one, Danny ordered for everyone the largest drink Patricio offered, the triple gooberberry surprise. Knowing cultish symbols when he sees them, Zvid quickly formed a gambit, showing his hand to Patricio and gaining a cryptic boon in return. Khan regaled Danny with tales of her daring do in the burning deserts to the far south, while showing off her newly learned magics taught to her by Pipette. Ever the lifelong besties, Reese and Devet Danny began making plans for their respective weddings and futures as in-laws. Needing some time away from the social energy, Zavid took a walk to a nearby cave with Khan sensing something was off and following close behind. Within the mouth of the cave was the freshly dead corpse of a massive dragon turtle. With some investigation, it became clear this mother dragon turtle lost her way, laid her eggs within the cave, and was killed by trapped swarms of piranha and brine sharks. The effects of Breath of the Cradle caused her to lay hundreds of eggs, far more than is normal for her species. Normally a boon for an endangered creature, unfortunately Versi's the line has come into alignment, distorting navigation, causing her babies to not know how to find the ocean, an easy snack for the waiting piranha. Thinking quickly, Zavid summoned forth Cecil, the skeletal sea dragon, and explained the situation. Cecil agreed to help the remaining turtle babies until the conjunction ends. Not wanting them to be raised without their mother, Zavid raised her himself, as a skeleton that is, Danny then used her recently learned magic of teleportation to send the new family to their safe home beneath the inner sea. And that's where we come in tonight. Well, today, it's in the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> in the infinite floating void, it, beyond uh, the size of the horizon, you see Baba Yaga uh, with her raven locks floating in the air around her. She, her. she looks down upon you. You see before you 
a massive parchment with cards the size of basketball courts, each with familiar faces upon them. She looks down to you and says, Welcome back, players. It is great to see you all again. Hi. Hello. Please, step forward. Elliot, you were so so selfless to give away your turn last week to Ash. I believe it's your turn this week. It's only fair. It felt right. You know, she's fairly here, so... Um, I was I was ready to step forward. I forgot that Danny took it, and <laughs> Elliot yeah. hasn't had a turn yet. So I've been like, oh, whoa, whoopsie. <laughs> yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, lost my footing there. I stumbled forward. Uh, I, I meant to do that. I meant oh, to do I that. got you, man. You just tripped. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whoops. So today, I'm going to go and choose Gurkha, because my big strong lady in real life is... Flying out, well, already flew out to do an audition, and I want her to nail it, so another big strong lady of my heart is Gurkha, so I got it. My girl. Both of my girls. Perfect. Gurkha Kahanui, eh? And she reaches down her massive hand, and she says, The Keeper of the Mountain Stew. And she flips the card over, and standing before you, all six foot five of her, is Gurkha Kahanui. The keeper of the mountain stew of Fogton. She looks down at you and says, Oh, hey there, Elliot. Uh, uh, you're, you're the one that controls Reese, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the only people to pass through Fogton actually beat me in the arm wrestling. Uh, you know, kind of got me purple in the cheeks, but... Uh. I do what anyway, I can. So, uh, the overlady here tells me that I was supposed to write this something for you, and... And she gave me the ability to give you a little present. So, you know, here we go. And she pulls out a vellum. It's about a little short piece of uh, just sheepskin with yeah. writing on it. And she begins to read. And it says, In a pot, you make a roux. Then roasted meats that swam or flew. Ancestors recipe, because they brew. The perfect bowl of mountain stew. When played, a hearty mountain stew code red appears in a cauldron before you. Any who take ten minutes to eat it gain the effects of a long rest. <laughs> the funny thing is, when I was grabbing oh my, my caffeine, God. I almost grabbed a mountain dew code red today. <laughs> almost. Oh my God. What? Yes, uh, if... When you play this card, you get uh, a big pot of Mountain Stew Code Red, and if anyone who takes 10 minutes to drink it gains a long rest. So, that's pretty great. I love that it. That is phenomenal. I'm gonna drop this card in your inventory there, Reese. Excellent. It is just called Gurkha Kahanui, Keeper of the Mountain Stew. And Gurkha looks to you and says, Well, th thanks again for mm. coming by. Hope you can visit Fogton real soon. I hope so, too. And she fades out in whoop, not that one she fades <laughs> out into a blue transparent hologram Una wanted to make an appearance Gunner's trying too hard to jump in the fray <laughs> it needs Valhalla I says it before him <laughs> but uh she becomes a hologram just like the rest Baba Yaga looks down to you and says very well the cards have been chosen Tafa now I think the first thing we're going to come in on is the Graveyard of Druma. I need to drop Savid on here. You've been here before, many, many times, as not only a cleric, but as a necromancer. Mm -hmm. You've uh, buried many bodies here, you've seen many funerals. At one point, you actually had to escape the... I believe you were escaping the castle, and you came in through... Oh, no! You you escaped in through the Temple of Eo, uh, where Demirius's mentor is from, uh, down through yeah. the crypts, and it led you through this uh, underground tunnel, and it came up into this crypt here. Uh, and that was how you made your escape at one point. I think it was during the riots, after the, after Baldabar died. Yeah, yeah. I remember Baldabar. flowers were falling. <laughs> flowers, like was, yes, yes. Yeah. It, was, it was madness. Uh, it was madness. Flowers were falling from the sky. But Pretty today crazy. is much more calm. Uh, the only person you see here is the Undertaker, who you've come to know quite well. His name's Alec Chubb. 
He is a, a relatively old human man with long scraggly gray hair. He wears very plain leather garments and a, a scraggly black top hat. And he's never seen without his shovel. He looks to you and says, oh, Good morning, Javid. Good morning. I oh, hope gosh. you've been well. I've been sleeping well these days. Uh, the city seems relatively safe uh, with all of you, Luxatumbra, around. Strange things happen, but uh, you keep us safe. I have, a, I have a proposition for you. What is it, sir? Before I ask, uh, out of curiosity, do you... Are you a religious man? Do you follow any gods? Oh, uh, yes. I believe that... All of the gods have their own place in society and life, but I suppose Phorosma is one of the keys uh, for someone such as I. What uh, is your feeling on the god Cabriri, one of the allied gods to Sanre and the others who are fighting against the sort of coming conjunction? I have heard things of this him who knows. I've received the brochures from the castle. It would seem that he's had a bit of propaganda against him in recent years. Uh, some misunderstandings that you seem to be clearing up. I ask these questions because I need someone here who can manage something for me. In all of the big cities, that we visit, I'm setting up a sort of uh, an opt-in program. And I hand him a bunch of consent mm -hmm. forms that I have uh, started to like, pr I had printed off and everything. And on the consent forms, there's basically like, it's sort of like organ donation, mm -hmm. similar to that, but instead it's body donation. If you die, you give consent to, for the Church of Cabrera to raise your body to fight in the coming conflict uh, with the conjunction. If you give a uh, donation to the church, uh, then, or if you like pledge your body's service to the church afterwards, you can then come back as a ghoul instead of like a lower undead. Yeah. That's, that. that's, that's one of them right there. <laughs> um, and that would allow your, uh, essentially you'd keep your intelligence your memories of your past life, but you'd become a ghoul, which means you, in order to continue existing, you'd have to, like, eat. <laughs> this is letting the you best have to... I'm, It's so funny. <laughs> it's so <Yes>. per perfect. <laughs> so, the idea, uh, basically what I'm, I'm having Alex Chubb do, Alex Chubb, is manage a space for the ghouls to be at night. Uh, I have already, I've, I'd imagine at this point, I have like a few ghouls under my thrall already mm -hmm. that I would have like work with him. And we would try to get a sort of system of like people that have signed the <laughs> consent forms. Mm -hmm. You can also, if let's say you're you, someone who has already died, like mm -hmm. your father or whatever died. And this was before the conjunction, before the whole Kabiri thing. And you know he would want to protect the family. You could, in his stead, sign a consent form to have him raise as a skeleton or something for the thing. So, like, Alec Chubb would be still doing funerary rites and stuff, but he, I'd be paying him mm -hmm. uh, a pretty penny here to be the head manager of, like, this whole thing working with these ghouls. Uh, so I'm coming to him with this proposition, this business proposition. Well, I've, I know that... Luxatumbra is trusted beyond reproach within the walls of Druma, and I know of the coming conjunction, and I myself was uh, in the Druman army. I was quite the warrior back in my youth, you see, and I wouldn't mind getting back on that battlefield one more time myself, uh, you know, but whatever I can do to aid the world one last time. I think I'd be happy to do that for you, sir. I understand this is a bit of grim work, exhuming bodies for this purpose. Uh, I will not be here all the time, but I will be revisiting Druma periodically. So collecting these bodies and keeping them from decomposing so that I might raise them up in service. Uh, I 
would appreciate that. Speaking of which, I already have some filled out consent forms. I need you to exhume these bodies. Oh my, yes, let me see if that. And he kind of looks at it and he says, puts on some tiny little reading spectacles and says, After the war, I was actually a barrister, so I have a little bit of experience with the legal documents. Let's see here. And he starts rifling through reading yeah. the legalese, muttering to himself, and says, Yes, this seems to be a bit of a tight mocked in and in order, so to speak. Uh, but yes, of course, I can get to work on this right away. <laughs> he begins to um, exhume bodies for him. Kind of, over time, you work with him, sort of following Yeah, I, I do whatever I could to help, and I have a couple ghouls with me, I imagine, that are, like, helping dig. They're really good at digging. In fact, ghouls are great. At, in fact, I have a spell. I have a, I have a spell... Uh, remove earth or whatever, or oh, it's yeah. like something dig up grave or something like that. Yeah, that I get from Cabri that ha can help me remove mm -hmm. uh, grave dirt. It's literally so that's for sort of... this point. Yes. Yeah. So, so you work with Alec to remove all this dirt, and uh, the bodies get brought up to the surface, and he says, "Well, do what you need, so I suppose." Uh, and then I'll make a, uh, I'll do a ritual, but super fast because of my macabre virtuoso feet. Uh, yeah! Wow! You're crazy, baby. <laughs> it's fitting crazy. the scene so perfectly, though. I don't, it's not even a <laughs> problem. Uh, yeah! <laughs> working with Alec over the course of the day, you do manage to you get your shadowy magics to in go into these bodies, some old, some much for more fresh and after a while you have raised yourself about uh, let's see one two three four five six seven un new undead of uh, several ghouls a skeleton and a single ghost My. i like to, i like to think the ghost was an accident like they were already their soul was already lingering on and i just let them like you know how, like, hauntings, sometimes they have to exert themselves to make their presence known? I, with my magic, they can just be a ghost all the time. Nice. Uh, that's cool. So they're like, oh, <laughs> well, that was easier than I expected. <laughs> and <laughs> they Sorry, go ahead. seem a little disoriented, but I, I think we can find a good place for them here. Um, so you, if Whenever you'll be back, uh, we'll make arrangements for the future. Uh, they indeed. say as he's, they follow him. <laughs> I will give him uh, uh, basically a pouch filled with gold, and it's pretty heavy. There's a bonus in there, hiring bonus essentially. <laughs> um, be like, this will go towards your retirement fund. I hope. Oh, thank you for that. I'll take good care of them. And he begins to walk away with and lead these new undead uh, out towards kind of the more the larger mausoleum within the within the graveyard wonderful i'm gonna be right back yeah, i need to sure. put ahead. my baby somewhere <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it fit really well for the grit for the it whole raising perfect. ghouls to see so that was perfect uh but let me see where next i think con probably Ooh. so con you would know that the person you need to talk to to get um things made like the chassis for your Molmec would be Bruce because he's a he's a blacksmith and he's the prince of Druma now, so he would have all the connections. So I'm gonna load up this here uh, throne room, which is where you would know he generally is uh, in the blacksmith's area. Mm -hmm. And uh, you would you would hear clanging coming from that area as you come into the main portion of the courtroom or uh, the courtyard. And you do see Demirius doing his his dancing to the morning sun out in the <laughs> courtyard near the fountain. <laughs> I, I I try to try to give him a high five like mid sway. I like I'll, I'll give a little <laughs> jump and slap his hand. Oh, That's cute. Hey, I love that. Good morning, Khan. And he gives you a high five as he comes down. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll wander into the smithy. Oh, hey, good morning, there, Khan. How's it going? Oh, good morning, good morning indeed. Ah, uh, I'm just I I had such a good day yesterday, getting to spend time with Danny. It's been it's been so long since I've seen her. Uh, oh Adele. yeah, she was talking about you all the time, but you know oh, I oh. thought I'd let all of you take the day because uh, we were able to see each other on our uh our seeing spheres, sphere crystals. Oh, that's so sweet. Ah, uh, but I have I have business talk for the both of us. 
Oh, well, right. What can I do for you? Well, as you, as you know, I am a, I am a, a prolific inventor. Uh, I, I make a, a great deal of many things. Have you seen my anagram, Miguel? <laughs> oh, look at that. And you just put in any word and he st- writes in, uh, he puts in his name, Bruce, and it, uh, the, it's the overclocked version. Or no, uh, would you have kept that version or is this the older version? Um, I think this is like the the Nat 20 <laughs> <laughs> The Nat 20 one? Yeah, so this is the high speed anagram maker. Uh, and it, it, it comes back with something like cherub. Uh, cause I, I'm not good at anagrams. It's the closest mm-hmm. I can come up with to Bruce and in, in my head. Uh, even though there's no H in, there's a silent Ew. H in Bruce. <laughs> there. <laughs> I, he's, he's my character. His name is R-U-C-E. Q. Yes, there's a silent H True. in Bruce. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. That's amazing. That's pretty bonza. Yeah, your, your, your inventions are always the, the craziest. Uh, but, uh, well, what, perhaps what's you have on not, your mind? Perhaps you have not seen the craziest yet. Uh, oh, wow. I am going to make a, a diabolical machine, uh, and I am, I am outsourcing some of the things that perhaps you know. Uh, she, you know, bites her lip, trying not to say beneath me. <laughs> <laughs> the more, um, the more ma- manual, the more menial tasks. Yeah, yes, you're delegating yes. the mundane stuff. That's yeah, all. Yes, delegating the yes, mundane you know. Stuff. Uh, I could be working and on it's... circuits, Lee, or I could be welding. You, you can imagine which one I would play yeah. to do. You don't need to be making nails. Exactly, exactly. Um, and so I'm looking for some assistance. Right, I, I think we can, uh, me and Mum can help you with that. We know every blacksmith in, uh, in the kingdom. We could, uh, get him, get him right on it. Yeah, you got some plans on you? Yes, I do. Uh, I have, uh, she pulls out, like, a whole bunch of folders of blueprints. Mm-hmm. Um, ideally, uh, you can give one set of blueprints, uh, to, you know, one, one person or one group. Uh, I don't, I want to minimize, uh, you know, folks seeing kind of the, the whole, whole design. Sure, sure. Gotta keep something to the imagination. Uh, exactly. Yeah, and he's, he's looking it over, showing his mom, Magdalene, uh, and they're looking at it, and it's uh, very, kind of, they're kind of confused by some of it, because, they, you know, it's very high-level stuff, but they're they're advanced enough smiths, they're able to kind of get, figure out what's going on. Uh, yeah, Khan, there's also, like, you know, um, <laughs> highlighted notes that Khan has made, mm-hmm. uh, or if, you know, Bruce asks a question, she'll try to clarify and scribble right. on the blueprints. Her blueprints <laughs> that she made and invented herself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think we can get this done. Uh, this outside shell shouldn't be too hard. These actuators, uh, yeah, I think we can get to work on this right away. Ex- ex- excellent. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. What do you say, Mum? Let's go. And then they uh, kind of dive into you know they speaking that sort of pigeon accent between uh dwarvish and common that no one can really pick up on except for uh, reese except reese that's true he can speak any language essentially uh okay so it's basically morning at this point i want zavid and khan to roll me your usual will saves <laughs> you got it I like to think that, you know, Khan decided to, like, try to make this deal while she was still sane. <laughs> That's fair. Every, everything sorted but out. But it's 35 is what you're looking for. Okay. Not reflex, so that would be too easy. <laughs> oh. Yes! Oh, yeah. Nice. Whoops, I didn't mean to put Reese on the combat tracker twice how did that even happen there we go and then reese oh wait no reese doesn't need one so both of you uh yeah both of you succeed on your will saves uh so you don't have any ill effects you wake up feeling refreshed and normal uh so yes con you did make that deal with uh your normal you, you remember to take your meds before you made a, a business deal with yeah. Bruce. <laughs> um and so you're the first one essentially into the throne room there con and you mm-hmm. can see that there's uh, Lord Maris over near the throne, just looking over some papers, uh, and there are two groups of people at differing tables. Over to your right are a couple members of the Malenki, the halflings from the desert. There's Zenmo, Great Shadow, the Empath. There's Finton Riverwater, the Navigator, and there's Marigold Shortbridge, who you know 
is actually Serenulia in disguise. This is this one. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. And uh, you realize that the bow in her hair is the gift that uh, Bix got from Shanker Claus for Chris in the Christmas episode. Oh. Uh, it was a, a bow. It was a, a bow of human vo humanoid form, but it was always a bow, no matter what form you took. So he gave her his bow, so he doesn't have to cast it every single morning. That's so he cute. can like he can leave her for like more than eight hours at a time. Yeah. So now and I put that bow on there. So yeah, there we go. So that's what you see on the right. And over on the left, you see Prince Aerodrill, that's Danny's brother, the crazy one. And then you see Seratulia, uh, your simulacrum that you and Zavid made. And then you see Empress Talandia, uh, uh, Danny's grandmother. Mm -hmm. and that's what you see in the in here. And not super long after that, Zavid, you would be waking up to breakfast. You know that the food is usually served within the throne room for people like you. Uh, and you would be coming down from essentially the west side up on the uh, the second floor. If you see yourself, I've put you on the map. Oh, let's see. Western Ooh, center. Uh, Western center. There I am. Do, 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 do. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Zavid. Says Lord Meris as you pass. Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, Zavid, good to see you. Uh, yeah, it was nice, nice to see you, Zavid. It's been quite a while. <laughs> hmm. I just nod and I say, like, good morning. I'm kind of sleepy. I go sit down over here. Good morning, uh, God. Good morning. Uh, things, uh, I was, I was able to delegate my work successfully. So that went smoothly. That is good. Um, you also seem in normal spirits this morning and not, uh, Not obsessive. distracted. Yeah. That's good. A, a kinder world, a more diplomatic, perhaps. Uh, but yes, it's it's nice to be in, um... It's, ni it's nice to be, I will say that. Where's our, uh... Where's the, where's the lovebirds? Uh... My Fenar and Reese. Shortly after you say that, from behind you, Zavid, you feel just a presence. <laughs> <laughs> and you turn around <laughs> as you see the beautiful visage of Empress Talandia Adasaril. Beautiful, immortal, as you know, secretly tens of thousands of years old elf queen looking down to you and she says, Pardon me, Zavid, is it? Yeah. May I have a word? Something tells me it'd be very rude to say no, so sure. <laughs> I love him. Wise and diplomatic. She says, and she sees that Khan is kind of, are you looking or are you kind of eating, Khan? Uh, well, now I'm looking. Okay. <laughs> like, eyes kind of wide. Yeah. She basically see sees you looking and sees... Aerodrill and the halflings all kind of looking, and she says, uh, Look here. And in her, her hand, she kind of does a bit of, like, opens her fingers like this and casts dancing light. And with her left hand, Zavid, only you notice because you're the most advanced caster in the room. She does a small little flourish with her left hand as she uses a quickened med magic to cast another spell. So, Khan, mm. what you see is a bright light that's really, oh, kind of distracting. But then, Zavid, everything around you slows to an almost standstill. Khan is looking interested at this ball of light, as are most of the halflings and everyone in the room. They're just kind of not moving at all. But the Empress looks to you and says, I think that will give us a bit more pri privacy. Did you just stop time? Yes, you're quite, wi you're quite good with the arcane. And you do recognize that she cast Time Stop with one action. Damn. By using a quickened metamagic. I won't make you roll. You're advanced enough to know that. You use metamagic. What are we even doing? Let's just like her hand while we're in. Hmm? Try it. <laughs> How's Sabine of you? Sabine's <laughs> eating while yeah. I her. No, that was very in character. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I had to finish. It's like a cookie dough ice cream, and I had like a big chunk. I <laughs> that had to sounds delicious. That's pretty good. 
He, he basically, I said, why does it, why don't we just let her handle oh. everything? She can time <laughs> stop with a single action. Gotcha. Right, but she looks to you and says, yes, I have a question for you. Now, I know that you have saved two of my grandchildren and you have, well, saved three of them on many occasions. And for this, I will be ever grateful. And for this, I trust you implicitly. And it is for this reason alone that I have decided to ask you and give you the benefit of the doubt. Why is it that when I have breakfast with Saronulia, I'm sitting with a sculpture of ice, and yet across from me, at another table, my granddaughter sits with halflings, but disguising herself from me. I smell your magic upon this simulacrum. I can sense your intentions are just. Which is why I'm simply asking. Why? Is it uh, my work sloppy? She touches your forehead and casts true seeing on you. And you, as you, you look to Sarah Nulia, and she just looks like ice that's smoking with with shadow. Like it's not smoke, it's shadow that wisps off her. And then you look over to uh, Marigold Shortbridge, and it's just. Uh, uh, Sarah Nulia hunched over, really short, eating her breakfast. <laughs> well, it's really obvious. I'm hoping whatever enemies we have do not have the power of true sight. And if they do, we have bigger problems. Yes. But uh, I want to insight check her. Absolutely. Or I guess perception check her. Yeah, perception check uh, in the tower, please. I, because, all right, this is a very powerful woman. Yes. Mm -hmm. It could be yeah. the grandma. It's probably the grandma. But if it ain't the grandma and she's like fishing for like info mm -hmm. out of me, I don't mm. want to just That's give fair. her info. That's fair. Uh, you can feel the power exuding off of this woman. Uh, if someone is faking being her, they are equally as powerful. Uh, and regardless, it, but she, also seems like she's telling the truth in mm -hmm. that she's concerned for her granddaughter but is also aware that there's a greater issue at hand and again she's giving you the benefit of the doubt and asking you once why you did this <laughs> okay you get the sense that if you were to lie to her right now it would be a very bad choice oh i'm not about to lie i just wanted to <laughs> like see if but I mean, also she gave me true sight, so I know she's not using mm -hmm. illusion magic. Uh, yeah, so if she is pretending to be that woman, she's either uh, completely altered her shape, like in reality, to look like this woman, mm -hmm. or it's her. But maybe something, you know, mind control or something is going on. No, with the um, true sight, you can see in her eyes just how old she is. That's mm -hmm. really the only thing that changes is there's a depth to her eyes. Well, then, you are aware that it is not, uh, it would not be ideal for our enemies to get the blood of your grandchildren, right? Of course. We cannot guarantee that any of your grandchildren's blood has not already been collected, including Danny's. However, Sarah Nulia is different. Your eldest daughter, granddaughter, pardon me, is, uh, was hidden away for years and years and years on the back of Mohatnu, a giant tortoise surrounded by sand and only accessible if you are not searching for them, but if you were truly lost, protected by a family of halflings that she trusts implicitly. Trust implicitly, excuse me. So... Our best bet of keeping the blood of your kin away from the cults that would use it to revive Robogug is to make sure they do not know which one is Serenulia. Having Serenulia here is still the safest place for her, but having a doppelganger, so to speak, not technically, but someone who looks like her, who takes her place, would be very good in case someone were to reveal their true nature. If any one of these people here were not who they said they were, were working for these cults and wanted to draw blood from Sarah Nulia, 
they, unless they were as powerful as you, of course, would go for the Simulacrum. They would realize something was amiss, and that Simulacrum connected to me would let me know immediately that there was something amiss, that we had a snake in our midst. This is worst case scenario. It's possible that uh, perhaps it is no, there is no spy and it's more just an assault or a, an infiltration of cultists try to get in, right? Be a bit more direct and a bit easier for them to plan that. Um, either way, as long as Serenulia's blood does not fall on their hands, then we are safe. However, I understand how prophecies go. I understand that uh, Rovagug coming back is very, very likely, regardless of everything that we, all the precautions we take. So, if we can delay it, if we can control the moves that they have to take in order to revive Rovagug, we can then set up traps for them. We can always be one step ahead of our enemies. And that would be very important, considering I don't know their faces. These are a lot of faceless cultists, a lot of people that uh, follow their gods, but no figureheads that I am aware of. Without that knowledge, we are very vulnerable. We're sitting ducks even. So this is a minor precaution, if anything. Having Bixir as sort of the true bodyguard to our, uh, I don't know if you've ever read these novels, um, Star Battles. Uh, there's this oh, sort yes, of- yes, The Ghost Menace. The Ghost Menace. So. Uh, again, you know, this is like the, uh, the Padmu and, uh, Princess Amidula, uh, <laughs> sort of gambit, right? Where they're always close yes. to each other, uh, the attendant can always talk to the queen and have her make the decisions that she would actually be making, but in the case of when she needs to reveal her true identity, she can do this. And, uh, I mean, it works. Um, yes. This is quite clever. You're clearly thought this through. Well, you have me convinced, Savid. I, I hope simply that... wanted to make ensure what your intentions were. What, if I may ask, did you fear about this that you had to ask me? What was the worst case scenario in your mind? Unsure. It seemed odd, but you have always protected my family. So, I did not suspect foul play on your part. Simply, trust but verify. I would do the same for Danny, but I'm afraid that they might have had many opportunities to get her blood from her, especially since becoming queen. She's very high profile now. It would be very easy for a pinprick or a mosquito even to get her blood if they wanted to, if they had any druids on their side and they want to be really sneaky about it. Yes. We should put up more wards for wild magics and primal magics, perhaps. It's easy to become blinded to the only the arcane. You know, while I have you here, yes. I think we should give them Danny's blood. Hmm. I think we should set the trap. Bait them. Present an opportunity for them to collect the blood. As long as they don't get Serenulia, they can't revive Robocog, but we can use this opportunity to track them, to find where their heart is. Put the magical enchantment on her, a tracker on her blood. Sort of like the status spell, but more on her whole body as opposed to just her spirit. We could find out where they are located. Hmm. I have had need for Danny's blood for ritual. It's could risky, be done. but we are getting to the end game. We need to take a few risks, and we need to make them think they're winning. So if we can hmm. set up an opportunity for them to try and take that blood, we can control how they do it, and then we can take them out before they have a chance to go for Serenulia. Yes. Take the battle to them. For far too long we've stayed on the defensive. For far too long have I stayed waiting. And as she says far too long, you can see just in her eyes how old this elf is. And you know, she doesn't know that you know how old she is. <laughs> um, I want to... When she says far too long, is she self-aware enough to know that that sounds like 
she's putting a lot of weight on the on those words mm -hmm. and she knows that i i pick like i'm making it very clear i pick up on that and i say um perhaps question actually mm -hmm. uh i have a uh, an ankh i believe that yeah, like or something for for the one of the first warriors from the first war i forgot their name amanda amanda that's right the ankh of memory that's it uh now, did Amanda were, were they familiar with um, Empress Talandia? Were they like yeah. on yeah, a first name basis? About, yeah, she told you all about her. I say I don't know how long this time stop lasts, but I, if we can keep it up a little longer, because I like I not, I like not having anyone be able to listen in on this. Um, I pull out the Anka memory. I met someone that knew you. They are still alive. Well, their spirit is bound to this Ankh. Um, are you familiar with Ma'at? Ah, uh, yes, I have heard of this name. She is, uh, she was a pharaoh from the far south ages is. ago. Is. Still is. Uh, is. she acquired Lichdom through bard the magic and is, uh, using, uh, the positive energy. Somehow can heal a very unique way to Lichdom and is on our side. Allied with us, yes. Uh, she, we had a big uh, adventure in Osirian. We took out some Lamash to call this, and we did a few different things where we found Serenulia, and we found this. Um, this is an old friend of yours, I think, might, uh, well, a servant, but I think at this point, you are both so wizened with age that perhaps you can consider her a friend. And then I will give her the Ankh. I want to just, I'm giving it up, giving mm -hmm. it to her. Because I think she could use a friend from the old days. And she looks at this and she says, she rubs it with one finger and says, Is this the Ankh of Amanda? I nod. Then you know of where I come, from where I come. You're an alien, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right. I do not. This is the why I trust to say this because you've made it very easy to speak freely in this moment. I will keep this and swear to secrecy, uh, but I will say that Khan and Reese also know. They have not told anyone either. And she looks down at Khan, who has. What is your face like? You're frozen as she had cast this, like, ooh, look at the shiny light. Like, what is Khan? It's, it's just like a gentle, childlike smile, and just like, oh, look at this nice thing. And she does look very adorable. <laughs> yep, of course. So Talandia looks down to you and says, truly, all of you are incredible adventurers, meant for great things. We have great things planned, but, uh, well... I have come a long way through space and time to ensure that this world does not end. Very well. I will look into this idea of yours, this blood gambit. I believe I have some enchantments that could um, allow us to track the blood if, if taken. Just make sure that... Uh... Either Danny is aware of the plan so that she can play along, or if you th foresee our enemies using some sort of mental magic to read minds, we might have to fool her. Either way, this is going to free her up. She will not have to be protected so much because they'll have what yes. they need from her, and she could be more of a combatant in the coming uh, battle. Very well. I hope we can work at once. Thank you for your forthrightness. <sighs> All right, so we should probably start time again. I, I I'm like looking over to Khan, mm -hmm. and I don't know, like like veins popping out, like ah, 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 like <laughs> so, like we should like let them continue. She snaps her fingers, and time woof, rushes back, and she's holding this shiny ball of light in her hand. Says, "Isn't that fascinating? Now I, I could show you how to do this if you'd like, Khan. You could. I heard recently that you got into magic." This, this is true. You may need uh, you may need to talk to my supplier, perhaps. <laughs> Pipette wriggles out. Oh, uh, dancing lights. I've I've heard of the spell, but I, I have to, oddly not, not not learned it. And uh, Talandia goes, "Oh, aren't you a little darling?" Boop. And she boops uh, Pipette's nose, and you learn dancing lights. Aww. So you drop that. I'm gonna give nice. it to you. Now. 
you. Since you had to sit quietly and do nothing through all of that. <laughs> I was I was entertained. I was I had a snack. I had a good time. <laughs> nice. Dancing lights. Yeah, I'm gonna drop that on your in, on your actions tab here. And you know what? I'm gonna give it to Reese too. Why the hell not? I'm a, I'm glad to have a uh, a conversation with her because she's she feels like a huge player. Yeah. And if I, if I was gonna tell anyone besides the party about like an idea yeah. of using her granddaughter's bait, it would it had Should to be, be her. her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she could help orchestrate it and do do it the best way possible. Uh, there we go. Dancing lights. There you go, Con. <laughs> uh, but then Empress Talandia, after booping Pipette on the nose, goes back to her seat and uh, goes back to her breakfast. Reese, it is roughly about that time that mm-hmm. you come down the stairs from the guest quarters. I've put you on the east of the map. Okay, second floor. Oh, okay. There I am. On that uh, balcony. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, so Reese is in guest quarters and he... First looks this way, gets a little turned around. It's like, wait, nope, nope, this way, this way, this way, this way. Nope, nope. Okay, all right, got this kiss. It's okay. <laughs> Says hello to the badger lady. I forgot her name. Oh, good morning, Grace. Uh, Lord Sayora Maris. She is the steward of Druma. She basically runs the place when Danny's not around. Okay. She's like Denethor from Lord of the Rings, except not horrible. Okay. Morning, Denethor. Oops, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> morning, morning, uh, Maris. Uh, good morning. Things uh, just being good this morning with a little bit of uh, Danny being here again. Oh, it's uh, always a little bit more chipper to have the Queen around. Yes. Good. Things good. have been a little more lighthearted. Hmm. I can imagine. Well, carry on. And he just kind of like strolls. Good morning. Waves to tables over here grandmother mm-hmm. hello and then just kind of like pops his butt down over here <laughs> right in between Khan and Zavid. yep well, <laughs> morning have you ever had like a dream about wet socks because I had a dream that was about wet socks and I feel like wet socks uh to be clear you literally woke up with wet socks. Yeah. And he just like I just, I just pulls up to be his clear. pant leg. <laughs> and on top of it, I woke up with wet socks. And he puts his pant leg down. And he just kind of As he rumbly. does, you smell. It just smells like disgusting pond water. This uh. wetness on his silk socks. It's gross. Fetid. Nasty. Yeah. Uh, perhaps did you sleepwalk? No, I don't sleepwalk. That's one thing I know I don't do in my sleep. <laughs> I have no idea what happened, but I don't like it. How well, did that, you that... sleep? Well, I I slept just fine. I had a, a, a very nice dream. It's uh, I was I was in a a prairie. You know, I was taking a nap in a beam of sun. You know, one of our uh, old uh, companions was there. Our old friend, an awakened girl. So I I had a lovely dream. I wish I had that dream. Maybe that son would be able to clear these up. And he just like, you know, but no, no. I I should probably just take these off. But I don't want to like yeah. be rude. I I think it's more rude to have them on the table. <laughs> yeah, I'll just suffer until we have to go and find some it, new it, socks. Go change. You're allowed to do. This. Uh, okay, I just want to show you the weird fucking wet socks. I just... <laughs> You're not just allowed like... to change. Yeah, the chain. Like... Did you hear any of that? No, no, but the okay. idea that you're not allowed to change your clothes, you have to stay in what you're wearing. <laughs> he changes out of the wet socks and arrives back with it. Why are you in wet socks? Sorry, I was in a uh, food coma. <laughs> it's okay, yeah, no, uh, my feet feel great, but I was in wet socks because I had a dream I was in wet socks. And, um, the dream... What? You had the dream? You're in wet socks? Yeah, and I feel like wet socks right now. Well, I don't actually feel wet socks right now, but my uh, my mood feels like the equivalence of when you have wet socks, which is not the best feeling. I'm... Wait. What? (laughs) 
you had the dream you were in wet socks, and mm. then you woke up and you just kind of felt like you did, but your socks are dry. Well, in my dream, I was going through like a body of water, but when I woke up, I guess the body of water transferred into the real world for some reason in my dream. No idea, but my socks were wet and icky, and I needed to show you guys before I, uh... uh because it was weird. Khan, did you have any strange dreams last night as well? Didn't you just no. hear Khan talk about the gray of I was sunshine? in a food coma. I was, I was out of here. I was <laughs> gone. He just, uh, like, grumbles. I, I had a nice dream about being in a, a beam of sunlight and taking a nap. Uh, who about, uh, Mound Upon Hill was there? Okay, that's weird. I had a dream. It was people in uh, different animals of different species sleeping in a circle. Uh, it was a lot of them. I couldn't tell which ones were there, but there was like these little uh, filaments, like strings or something, but they were like connected to lights in the sky. It was orange, a blue, a yellow. I'd like a dark white, the like gray light. It's, I don't know. It was a dream, but um, it felt bad. I don't know why. It just, it was connected. They're all their brains, their heads were like pressed against the ground, connected to the, 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 the light at the top. And then I woke up and I pulled out a little crispy yellow leaf and this fell off of my head into my lap. You got a leaf and I got wet socks. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if that meadow I dreamed of was a real place or the wet socks was real or the nap that you took was oh, real. The but wet that socks seems very are strange. absolutely real. I just took them off and put them in my room if you want to go smell them. Uh, I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> Is dreams connected to one of the planets coming into alignment? Yes. Uh, <laughs> One that's been in alignment. It was actually the first one, Le Leavara the Dreamer. Yes, Leavara. Here, I'll open this for you. There's your solar system. Uh, Leavara the Dreamer is the Saturn one, the one with the big rings, mm -hmm. big like orange one. But yeah, so I'm it like it affects. Let me see. Let me pull up exactly what that one does. Uh, during the convergence, illusions and dreams push up against the realms of reality and the waking world. Mass hallucinations and hysterical town-wide nightmares grip all. Fear, paranoia, and exhaustion creep over the land. Uh, but this seems jokes like on you. I'm already paranoid. Uh <laughs> give me a religion check in the tower. Yeah, let me. Let's let's religious this. Let's get religious, religious in here. Get religious with it. Let's oh, get religious in here. God. Just kidding. We don't advocate for any one specific religion on Bard's Playhouse. Just rolled a nat 20. Oh my god. 49 49. Oh my, oh my just fucking god. It. I just dropped it in the chat so you could see it. Oh yes. Damn. No. I'm a, uh, can I have put guidance on that and got a 50? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah, I got a 50. That Woo! would actually, that would technically be the first non-initiative uh, 50 in the game. Because Khan has gotten fifty once, or if Khan has gotten fifty twice on initiatives, because you have like an insane bonus. Uh, but yeah, with a fifty, that'd be the first non-initiative fifty. Good job. So a critical nat twenty. You quickly realize putting together that this is more than just Leavar the Dreamer. You're quickly realizing that in your dream specifically, Zavid, there were four dots of light: orange, blue. Yellow, and what did I say? Yellow and gray? Yellow and gray, yeah. And you're thinking about the planets. Leovar the Dreamer, Breath of the Cradle, Abel on the Horse, and Verses the Line. Verses is the most recent one to come into alignment. It's the one that messes with navigation. But you're realizing that these four together have more than their individual parts. Something more is happening here. Ooh. That involves that all four of them together are doing something else. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, hmm. Hey, guys, I think we got like a combo going on. What's that about? 
like multiple planets it's like a set like a armor set bonus if you've ever played that board game where if you get all the cards it gives you like a bonus for having them all sure. um conquerors of Catan, i think something like uh, that mm -hmm. yeah um, that one yeah it's a good good one uh but listen i think it's this abalon the horse versus the line leavara the dreamer and breath of the, the cradle which is yellow uh gray <coughs> orange and blue from my dream i think i don't listen this is very new for me but i think something additional is happening because all of them are in conjunction and i would be willing to bet that uh castravel the green uh eox the dead triaxis the wanderer and uh opaste the messenger wait was that the one i believe oh. that's all four of them let me look uh or is it Akaton the... No, Akaton the Red it's, doesn't have anything Triax to do with... It's Triaxis, Apostate, Castorvel, and Eox. Yeah, you were right. Yeah. Uh, when those four are in alignment, I think something with magic happens. I think... And I look up, and I don't know if this is true or not, but what if 10th level spells become something you don't need miracles to cast? That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? What's a, uh, yeah, anyway... Um, so I don't I'll, know. I'm actually going right? to tell you above table. I'll just tell you straight up. 10th level spells aren't the issue. You'll get your 10th level spell at 19. That's okay. not a problem. In my specific world, 10th level spells aren't things that don't exist. They're just super duper rare. Right. So that's fair. It's only in D&D &D where uh, they yes. decided the yes. god goddess was like, you guys aren't responsible enough for mm -hmm. things above ninth level so we're mm -hmm. capping it there yeah. so I which will... is canonically true it's very funny so i will confirm to you that you will without having to do anything wacky no conjunction effects you'll get your 10th level spell at level 19. sure um i guess can i figure out what these conjunction combos do with a nat 20 on my religion check is there a way to figure that uh... out i'll give you the this one but not the the four magic ones could I make an additional role with lore astronomy to try and like get as much information out of this yeah, scenario okay. as I possibly sure. can? Give yourself a plus one for your. Can either of you aid with astro? Uh, not necessarily strict astronomy, but do you have something that would like convince me a different skill would aid him? Um, hold on. I have, I have, legendary in perception in society so let's go society okay yeah that would be like history yeah, you know you would maybe be like learn about it yeah 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 con yeah. con could do crafting <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> stealth <laughs> she's so sneaky you remember something <laughs> that would actually be hilarious I look and she's just gone like that. Does that help? I get a help from that. <laughs> but yeah, through through the uh, society publicly there, Reese. Okay, society publicly is going to be. That's still a crit. Uh, so you can have a plus three total for guidance Jeez. and aid. That's it's so funny that you have to get a nat one to not crit. <laughs> yeah. And even a nat one is still an aid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right so i get a plus three two from so, plus three okay got yeah, it two from reese one from gu uh, guidance hell yeah all right here we go astronomy lore oh nice even 40 that's pretty good so using reese's knowledge of history your knowledge of astronomy uh you're kind of able to reverse engineer events throughout history and you're realizing that when these four abalon uh versus leovara and Brethida, have historically come into uh alignment this is when people believe that uh this is hard to describe uh frequently there are mass hysteria events that happen in villages where people will uh all run away from their village because a monster appeared out of nowhere. Uh, some people will say that monsters from their dreams appear and attack them. Uh, anything that they, they, their dreams start coming true in like monkey paw type ways. Mm. Um, 
uh, things of that nature with dreams becoming reality. Uh, and with your high enough rolls, you were able to find t tales that Reese has heard of from ages ago where wizards spoke of unspeakable power. Wizards and clerics and witches who would t speak of whispered power that would be, could be gifted, it could never be taken, but only at the rarest, most direst times of need. That's all you can put together with those rolls at this time. Say that again? Casters from ancient times, there are myths of particularly dire circumstances uh, that called for one mighty caster to save the day. Uh, and they would move mountains, raise cities, things of that nature. Just unbelievable power uh, that would be given to these casters in direst times of need. During these conjunction events, with the these ones, four. the ones for the the four magic ones, Treax, Apostate, Castrovel, Eox, the ones you and Connor roll against, yeah, those four. Okay, but then for uh, so so the first combo is people's dreams come true for ill or mm -hmm. good, yep. and then the other one is uh, a cat like a specific caster could be lifted up to be like mythical, mm -hmm. yeah, like you Moses parting the Red Sea type yeah. cool you shit. It. You got it. Okay. Uh, I'll share that. Blah, 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 blah. Download, download, download. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, uh, God. That... That would be real. Great. This is, uh... I mean, it's pretty cool. Also, a little scary. Yeah. Um, I'll say that uh, the only few that don't have a um, combo... Octar and the Stranger, for obvious reasons, not from here. And then uh, the Diaspora, because it's just an asteroid belt, so that doesn't have an alignment. And then, oddly, Akaton the Red. That is the only one that is native to the system that isn't an asteroid belt that does not have a combo. It is, I think, also the... I'm not sure. On here, it doesn't look like it is, but I think it might be the closest to Galarian in a sense of, like... Mm -hmm. Yep. It has the strongest effect on its own to Galarian. Stronger Absolutely. than any of the other ones do. And also, I think it's the last one in the conjunction. Mm -hmm. Sure so is. Of course. It, that see, one's going to suck, guys. That one's going to be real really, bad. You suddenly well, realize that that's the set. The whole thing. Yeah. Akaton is its own natural, set. With your nat 20, you're realizing there's probably something else once Akaton hits. Some other big set. That I'm not going to give you further details on. I think oh, all you... of them. I think literally, if you have them all, that's also a set. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Reese just goes, well, I don't know which one's going to be affecting me. So that just sounds delightful. A mystery. What kind of magic do you have? Um, my magic was uh, out looking. of character. Um, I'm looking. My magic you have is... ranger magic, right? Uh, which... Oh, that's a cult, usually. Cult. Typically. Well, it, it's also... Khan is a witch, but is arcane. It depends on which... And, yeah, uh, I guess. And Yanka is primal. She's a winter witch. So it depends yeah. on your your thing. But Reese specifically is an occult witch. And Reese, you also do have some cantrips that are innate and arcane. Yeah. Uh, like Your detect magic is arcane. But tech, I've, I've determined that you do need spell slots to be affected by the planets. Okay. So you don't have spell slots yet. Cool. So... Which is why you don't have to roll. Uh, your occult, uh, magic, which I also have from my Shadow Bloodline. Um, when Aox the Dead is in alignment, we're going to have to grapple with whatever effect that gives us. Oh, great. And then if anyone here has primal magic like that of a druid or something, that's going to be Castrovel the Green. Oh, and Yonka's going to love that. And Danny. Mm. Oh, God, and Danny. I have a feeling it's going to just make you not care about civilization and only care about nature and shit or something. Like, you're just going <laughs> to... It's going to be so to annoying. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, um, I don't have to deal with that one, but fuck. Imagine if you had all four. Oh my god, Like a that. true thaumaturge. <laughs> like, you had all the magic, and then you had to make four no. saves. 
<laughs> I'll say I, I made a character once that was just a theory craft. I never got to play it. I named him Minimus Maximus, and he was a sorcerer <laughs> who had all four traditions. <laughs> it's hard to get him, but you can do it. <laughs> I just, God, I mean, would you just achieve perfect balance if you, like, trained yourself and just, like, oh, you know, like, had everything? I don't know. Now we're just now we're just like eating around like a table and just like bullshitting about yeah. like I wonder what would happen if like <laughs> <laughs> But uh I kind of like look at my sundial on my wrist. Oh look at the time. We gotta get going. Oh uh, yeah. We gotta get out of here. <laughs> it is time to head to the north. <clears throat> yep, time to head to my people's land that's gonna be weird then it's not osirian and it's north weird do we have do we know what we're gonna have to deal with when we get up there like what sort of obstacles like environmental or otherwise that we might need to face reese knows that it's in the steaming <clears throat> sea uh which is notoriously has a lot of geysers stinky well, so it maybe probably has a lot of rotten egg smell from the geysers. Uh, there's a lot of um, geothermal vents uh, in the area, but otherwise there's a lot of ice to the east in the land of the Linorm Kings. So a lot of extreme temperatures, it sounds yes. like. Yes. Um, okay. That. Um, let me see here. I think there's a spell, like Endure Elements or something, that allows us to, like, well, you know, Endure Elements. Uh so we might be able to use that. I just want to know if I need to uh, prepare any spells or if I have to like mm -hmm. go somewhere. I like pull out some <clears throat> clothes pins I took off of someone's like, uh, you know, laundry line and be like, these are going to be really important for where we're headed. Yeah, uh, Reese just kind of gives low down of, yeah, the weather though, from what I've been told, it's changing all the time there. There's extremes here and there. So just be prepared for anything. Ah uh, yes, it's uh it is uh endure elements, and if I mm -hmm. cast it at uh oh, it only lasts ten minutes. No, the casting time is ten minutes, and it, duration is until you make your next preparations. So cool. I can. Uh, are we going to be in severe cold and heat or extreme cold and heat? Like extreme is like in lava and right. in liquid <laughs> nitrogen, right? Probably uh, not the the worst one. Okay, so then I'll use third level slots to mm -hmm. pr like prepare cool. those spells uh, so that we can uh, survive severe cold and heat and be fine. Great. Let's see here. So, and you're taking the the wind seeker, I assume, because that's the, you're going back to the area where Adelina, Gunnar, and Yanyanka are from. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And mm -hmm. they have an airship, so it's a free ride. Um, let's see here. So I have the airship. There it is. I can drop you all on there. Just a second. Ooh, but I'm gonna add the Wind Seekers too. So give me just a moment to get this set up. Now, thinking back to your dreams, uh, Con, you realize that the two of them are all, both had something weird. Uh, ha when they woke up, Reese had wet socks. Zavid had a leaf fall out of his he uh, hair, hair, and you realize that you woke up with fur that wasn't your own on your jet, your cloak. I imagine, like she, she, she only noticed like when she was changing into her adventuring gear. She got a good look at her pajamas mm -hmm. and was like, "Huh, that's not mine. That's not one of mine." Give me an, uh, an intelligence check. Either public or... Pr yeah, public, it's fine. Yeah. Re regular old intelligence? Yeah, just regular old intelligence. Plus five. You're pretty good at those. Not terrible, that's good enough. You realize that that's the color, the same color as your friend Rupert Mound upon Hill, the Awakened Gopher. That makes sense. She's not necessarily surprised, given <laughs> given all that happened, but it's like, ah, mm -hmm. they're not pulling a prank on me. <laughs> right. Uh, and it even... Give me a perception check in the tower. She's gonna give it, like, a... Yeah, That's like a small right? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty 
perception. You got it. Wah! Thirty four million. Yeah, so yeah three. Still pretty high though. Uh, it does smell like him. You remember what he smells like with your rat senses. This is his fur. Somehow Rupert's fur got on you in your sleep. But is it is it really Rupert, or is it just the Rupert that I remember given form? <laughs> Excellent question. If, if it's exactly what I remember, does that have any bearing on reality? Who knows? Did, did were you covered in like blood and stuff when you woke up and felt full? Like you had a big meal? No, just the fur on the pajamas. Sort of like dark urge, like uh, waking up and the, you oh, have a flash God. of him being like, Please stop it now! <laughs> Come on, we were friends! <laughs> oh, God. No, you just remember uh, seeing him sleeping in a sunbeam and hearing angels singing and then... Uh, Thinking he looked comfortable laying down with him. Such a nice dream. So better than having wet socks. Yeah. Seriously. Or existential dream. Yeah. Reese, your wet socks were from trudging through snake infested swamps. Yeah. Yeah. And then Zavid seeing all those animals and the swarming insects within the uh the glade. Each of you described them to each other pretty well, right? Yeah. Yeah? I'd say. Then... Yeah, I, I, I kind of pulled directly from what you, you told me, yeah. so I hope I described it right. Give me wisdom. just more upset about the wet socks. Give me wisdom checks in the tower, all three of you. Just a wisdom check. Just Let's wisdom. go. No just wisdom. We're just, it's just a check. It's just you know, a we're just checking. One. <laughs> oh wow. wow I'm sorry I didn't mean to, to be funny, no, that's, but funny. I guess that's funny. hilarious that was hilarious no, Zavid has the highest wisdom so that checks out uh, as you're all talking about hold, it hold on guys one second sure as you were talking about your dreams earlier Zavid you picked up that uh, Khan had mentioned angels singing when describing seeing Rupert which there it is. <laughs> now you figured it out. Mm. I, I keep, I keep, I've been nudging you guys for the last like five minutes. And then you, you got there. <laughs> uh, okay. Why? Gross. Why? Uh, all right. Uh, I'm. I guess that's gonna make Zvi not want to think about it. Like mm -hmm. he's just not gonna think about it after that. Happened? Like what's he? Apparently there was like like a choir of angels singing in the background of one of these dreams. I think it was my oh, dream or something. No, it was Khan's. It was in Khan's. It was Khan's dream. Khan dreamed about Zavid's fear. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so I'm if, I'm just <laughs> focused on my task. I ain't even talking about this. <laughs> and, yeah, whether or not he would have brought that up. Yeah. Mm -mm. Definitely, if Reese had mentioned that it was like snake infested swamps, I think Khan mm -hmm. would have been like, Ugh. I mean, now, now I'm especially glad that I, that I, um, but I didn't have your bad dream. I don't, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. And wait, but, hold on. What was Zavid's dream again? Zavid dreamed about a bunch of animals sleeping in a glade that included like a bear, an eagle, a tree, and a bunch of swarming insects. Oh fuck! Okay, yeah, Reese definitely. Uh, would have we just omitted been... such important details. <laughs> we I'm did. Sorry. All three I'm of you. So sorry. Sorry. The one important detail. I yeah. Need <laughs> you to put in there. Because yeah, uh, yeah. Well, the snakes, the angels singing. The it was a bunch of it was a bunch of animals. I said, yeah. you know, <laughs> it was the sunbeam. Uh, I was too. I was too subtle. You were. Yeah. <laughs> That's you should have fault. bonked us over the head. Yeah, that was on. Well, you'll notice I've been spending the last ten minutes poking you. <laughs> poking you. But now the truth have come out. Yes, I was too subtle. Now I know. That makes more sense. I'm, I'm preparing a lot of different spells than I usually prepare. It's gonna be good. Yes, yeah, so it starts uh, becoming more concerning uh, the more you talk about it. How each of you dreamed each other's fear. And yeah. you're suddenly wondering why you dreamt about Rupert. You know, why is 
that? I don't because David, you're not afraid of him, are you? Afraid of who? Rupert? Yeah. N no. I mean, I'm just, I don't, I'm not underestimating him. He seems like uh, very powerful, but uh, I'm not like afraid. I mean, should I be? He has never, never given us any reason to be. He's kind of cute, actually. I mean, yeah, he's he's a <laughs> cool guy. He's a cool guy. I don't Rupert, know who uh, Rupert is, but uh, he's is. an awakened uh, groundhog. Um, I'll show you. Yeah, uh, he looks like a prairie dog with a bow and arrow. He's great. <laughs> oh, I love him. Oh, yeah, yeah we love this guy. It's... We can't get enough. Oh. And uh, he has a very official sounding voice. Very smart. I, yeah. I, why are you asking me if I'm afraid of him? Well, uh, I mean, we said that there were uh, snakes in the swamp, and yeah. don't tell anyone, but I I think if there's one thing I'm most scared of, it's snakes. My uncle got eaten by a snake. It was the scariest oh. thing I've ever seen. Ooh, sorry. Sorry to hear that. I love snakes. Not mm, as pets, wait. as meals. Like, they're really tasty. Um... So, wait, Savid, um, just to recount, if that was in Khan's dream... I dreamed about animals. Of... So, what... what kind of animals, though? Well, uh, there was like a tree. Uh, that's not an animal, sorry. There's a deer, uh, or an elk, maybe, a bear. There's like a swarm of insects. No! I guess you count that okay. as an animal. Yep, that's, um... Mm. Yep, don't like those. You don't like bugs? I don't like them swarming me and being all oh. over me and crawling in and around me. Nope. No. I've I... had, there's this one tale in Osirian um, called the Scorpion King. <laughs> and there is this one tale where this person royally fucks up. And there's these beetles that just crawl inside this guy's skin and... It is the worst, so no, I do not like insects. I guess I've always had the ability to just channel negative energy and kill anything around me if it ever bothered me, so it never really bothered me. But now that you say that, I suppose I can understand where you're coming from. Yeah, I don't really like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, uh, th those things don't scare me not to i'm not trying to hold that over you i just i understand no, you guys have your you're things fine, you're fine wait so that was so my dream had something you didn't like and then your dream had something she didn't like yeah the snakes yeah. and her dream what was in your dream uh sunbeams boot belt oh. okay whatever voices singing they were nice from the sky singing voices yeah like a quail oh were they angelic sounding? Yeah, that's enough description. Uh, okay, all right. Why? <laughs> um, how even? I don't. Huh? How? But why? Were they, uh, they are, I... Okay. So if these dreams are have a manifestation of each of our fear, I think that's what we're getting at. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't like angels. Uh, <laughs> they scare the fuck out of me. Uh, have you seen an angel before? No. They're like, they're like supermodels. They're like perfect, but in a weird way, like Uncanny Valley perfect. Like you, no one should be that perfect. And then also, they seem very like, kind of deliberately unable to see nuance like black and white this is good this is evil this will be smited this won't um anything that's that strong and perfect and willing to kill anything they think is like doesn't fit their mold of what good is makes me afraid because look at me i am i am something to be smited right do I look like someone, an angel, would want to, like, kick back and have drinks with? No. They see me and think, Necromancer, you got to die. So, the idea of angels unnerves me because, like, a demon I can understand. Bad guys, of course, but, like, you know, all of the stuff, like the spikes and stuff, it's either meant to invoke fear or meant to be, like, a weapon. But how are these regular people-looking things with wings how are they so strong that they can fight those things right they don't have horns they don't have 
sharp teeth. They're just people, but they're like... They're like amazing at everything. Fuck that. That's stupid. And also really scary. Why are they so good at everything? Does that not scare you? Yeah, you know, uh, my that's pulse is kind of spiking quite now. Uh, that's, 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 that's really uh, weird. Uh, uh, imagine, uh. imagine, okay, L Reese? You don't get it because no. you are very physically attractive. I just as as Thank a peer, you. I'm gonna let you know I as an as a, But imagine someone who's as attractive as you, but as smart as Khan, and as uh, charismatic as Danny, and as uh, uh, resourceful as myself. We'll say right. Imagine someone shows up like that. Mm -hmm. They're stronger than all of us combined. They have a glowing light, and you might think, oh, very attractive, but then they look at you and say, you've committed one too many crimes. I'm going to have to kill you Take because you're time. evil. And if you try to talk your way out of it, they won't listen because they don't need to. They're an angel, and you're, you're to be smite. So this perfect being is coming after you, not in a sexy way, in a I'm going to end your existence way because that's what my god wants. And that that's... That's free. So, that you kind of my like an fear. Angel, though, then, because you're you sometimes go after people your god wants. Like, are you being like an angel? But I'm, to, but I'm mortal. No, no, I'm just a cleric, right? I follow my god's will, okay. but I'm mortal. I'm very much able to die. Oh, okay. So <laughs> um, you're like a mortal angel. No, uh, I mean that'd be sweet, but no. Uh, I'm not, no, but look at me. I'm not an angel. I can't fly or any of that. Like, I Yet. think they all fly. I'm pretty sure they all fly. No, you're missing it. You're missing it. I look, don't know. Angels right. just sound really fucking I weird, man. They are. They are in a bad way. Because you think, the idea of it, like, if you're just like a farmer or something, and you think of an angel, you're like, oh, I think the angels are going to protect me. And they probably will, because you're a farmer. You're not that important, right? But think about us and all we've done. Think about how important we are, right? Which I'm not trying to stoke our egos. Like, we are literally trying to save the world. So we're kind of a big deal right now. Angels are paying attention to us because they have to. But they can't come into this world unless they're summoned, right? They can't just show up. They have to be brought in. And they can be brought in by Demirius and people like him who follow Serenray, who can then summon angels. Now, so you're Demirius, afraid of Demirius. Well, I can be. If, he, <laughs> if Thraxis the Wanderer makes him go crazy, yes, a little. But he understands nuance. He's not like an angel. He knows things are just black and white. He sees the gray. He understands that... <laughs> Sometimes mortals have to make imperfect decisions when they have not all the oh, information or not okay. all the power, okay. right? Yeah. I I have learned the necromancy, but I did that as a means of survival, right? And I've done things that are considered evil as a means of survival. So they only try explaining that to an immortal perfect being that never ever had to struggle for anything. Oh, Try to tell them that, oh, I raised the dead and I desecrated graves and I did all these things. Try telling that thing that I did that to survive. They're not going to care. They're going to be like, well, that's anathema to my God. You must die. That's all they need. That's all they need. And they like it. I'm pretty sure they like to smite. It's like built in because they think I'm doing good. I'm killing evil. Right. They look at us. <sighs> Like we're no different than demons because we committed bad acts. Now, if you're not powerful, if you're a farmer, they give you a chance to repent. But if you're me, do you understand that I give off an aura of my God because I'm a cleric? Oh, I like I give off an evil aura. If someone were to detect evil, I give off evil because my God's evil, not because I'm evil. It's because my God is a piece of shit. No offense, Cabrera. <laughs> you know you are. And so if... Uh, 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 like some, you know, Ioma Day or, or Saren Ray Clark who doesn't know me goes, hmm, this guy is a weird shadow man. I'm going to detect evil. They're going to think I have to die. Now, I might be able to talk my way out of it if it's immortal, but if it's an angel, they don't care. They're not going to listen to me. Fuck them. 
Thank you. That's it. Okay, out of character, I just really was having a good time with these just being like, dude, I don't get it. These just sound like assholes. Yeah, yeah. Severe, yeah. Hearing, take a hero point for that like, rant. <laughs> take a hero point for the, well the angel rant. That was a well deserved. So I, I loved, I loved going on that that That's rant. Great. Thank you for tell. giving me the. I can tell because yeah, we're just playing the himbo card. Like what? <laughs> I'm sorry. <sighs> All right, now I'm, and I'm also worried uh, about our friend Rupert. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna work some up here. <laughs> um, I find I'm like not I just. I happen to not be wearing anything blue, and I'm like, hold on. I'm like, I have to get some blue stuff. Uh, go in my pack and find like a blue sash tied around my arm. All right, we're good, we're good. Uh, call up, uh, call up uh, uh, Rupert with Mork's cunning sending. Hey, Rupert. No. Rupert, hello, wake up, hello, hello. Uh oh. He's not waking up. He's like asleep and struggling. Where are you? Where are you? I'm so oh, sorry. Sir. You just hear snoring and then pained breathing and can't wake him you up. Gonna, you gonna make me scry on him? I think that's a ritual. <laughs> I think I have to. You gonna make me scry on Rupert? A, a mound upon hill? I might. Alright. Uh, I think it's a ritual. I have to look it up real quick. Um, let's see. Yeah, rituals. Uh, Anyanka! Uh, I need yes. your help. Oh, Do you have a crystal I ball? No, of course it did. And she pops off her witch hat and pulls <laughs> out uh, a big old crystal ball, throws her hat back on. I'll keep a spare just in case. Alright, let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Uh Is it a I thought it was a I thought that was one of the things that made it different in this version was that it wasn't a uh spell, but a but maybe am I wrong maybe? I think it might just be a spell. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. Maybe you're right. Um, scry. -ing. Scrying. Scrying. Here it is. Oh, it's a uh, arcane and a call only. It's a sixth level spell. Oh, um, okay. And if okay. I have the deity Magda, the three. I might get access to it, but I don't. Gotcha. Well, I might have to ask her then. I might have to ask yeah, her to scry primal. for us. Yeah. I think. Oh, I she's primal. Done. Shit. Or yeah, she's primal. What is uh, it? Is it arcane occult? occult? Hey, uh, I look to you two. Hmm. I look to Lao Shupo or uh, Pipette. Hey, I know you're not my familiar. <laughs> um. Yeah, yeah, yes. Well, what can I do for you, Zavid? You think uh, you think you could have Khan here scry on our friend Rupert, Mound upon Hill? And she slithers up to you a little bit closer and says, Did you just ask the god of spying to help you spy on someone? Yes. Yes, I will help you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, so let's see. Scrying is a sixth level spell. Okay. So, uh, so... Are you, does, so, wait, wait, wait. So does this mean if 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 this is cast, Khan learns the spell, right? Because that's how that's it correct. works. That's how it works. Yes. Essentially, what is happening <laughs> is uh, <clears throat> Pipette is going to work with you, Khan, to explain how to make a scroll of um, scrying, a scroll of mm -hmm. scrying. And so she, that then she can eat it. Yes, yeah, so exactly. Learn. Yes, you. she shows you how to write it. You you follow the handwriting. You get all the sigils correct. You put the, the uh, material components into it. And uh, as you put the finishing touches on, Pipette looks at it. Perfection. <laughs> and devours it like it's a taquito. And then I am adding scrying to your sixth level spells. Boosh. And now it is... I'm going to prepare it and take off your chain lightning. Go ahead. That? Go ahead. There you go. So you have scrying uh, prepared now, but you, you still know um, the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just that this is what I prepared. Yeah. You still know chain lightning. You just can't cast it today because you have this prepared. Yes. Exactly. Uh, if I if I can have the, the crystal ball, please. Of course. Here you go. Uh, and then also you have his fur. 
I do. Mm -hmm. And she, That's she gonna like, help. pulls out her pajama bl blouse um, and puts it on the crystal ball. Okay. And you, you just know the incantation now, because Pipette has taught it to you after eating this scroll. You know the the somatic components to make with your hands. You know the words to say. It's almost preternatural. And as you finish casting the spell on Yonka's uh, crystal ball, wow, glows to life. And what you see is a beautiful glade ringed with golden crispy leaves. And in a circle on the ground are several different sleeping animals including your friend Rupert Mound Upon Hill, fast asleep. And there is a... some type of fey creature walking around in a circle looking... Well, you'd need to give me a perception check to see what she... what is up, up with her. You got uh, it. Is this in the in the crystal ball? Like, we can that's, all yes, see it? In the, you can all see this in the crystal ball. Okay. I'm like, that's my dream! I dreamed of this! I didn't... I don't remember her, though. I don't know, maybe she'll sing... What is the what kind of um check? Perception in the tower. Okay. A horseshoe crab? <laughs> yes. <laughs> in a tank, I love it. In a tank, yes. <laughs> and you'll also notice one of the trees is zing. Very good. Uh, and then Where's Reese? the swarm of insects? I forgot to put it on there. My bad. It's okay. We all know that they're gonna be there though. They're there. There's a spider. <laughs> oh, wait, no, this is the spider. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be the spider. That's right. The spider represents the insects. Okay. I bet that, like, you can't see them because they're kind of spread out, but it's the whole bunch of little scarabs. <laughs> right. Uh, Reese, could you throw a perception in the tower, please? Yep, absolutely. Sweet. No. Perception. Shoot, hold on. I'm... Um make the one thing the whole screen because otherwise I can't roll it because it's covered. Oh, no problem. You're good. There we go. Alrighty. Uh, Khan, looking... Zavid, you're re you're too busy realizing that this is your dream. Khan, you're looking at her going like, I don't remember her. And you're looking at her face and she looks tired. She looks frazzled. Uh, she d she's just wa walking around in circles, uh, stopping at each of these animals occasionally, but there's bags under her eyes. She's exhausted. I want to call her up. I was going to suggest, like... <laughs> I'm doing a speakerphone, too. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. So you see this before you, because you have holophone, I'll give you the better image. This beautiful, uh, give me nature checks in the tower. I'll give you that she's some type of fae, clearly. <laughs> Can I roll mine publicly with my plus five? Sure. <laughs> 18. Be nice. Uh, Con, she you is green. You recognize <laughs> this is a satyr. Cool. Uh, it's sort of a half human, half goat, but uh, it's... She seems very like a very powerful type fey, uh, not an average satyr. There's a lot of magic to this woman. But you call her up and you, you hear in your voice. I go, hey, freak! <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Oh, who's, what's there? What, what cursed magic is this now? It's a sending spell. It's not cursed. But we see you and we see you prancing around our unconscious friends. What is going on? By the way, my name is Zavid. Nice to meet you. What's your name? I, I'm, I am Archdruid Asp and Zora. I, I am uh, the Archdruid of the Crystal Hearth Glade. And we had a Druid moot. We were trying to gather forces for the coming war. And I do not know what happened. Everyone has succumbed to this sleeping sickness. I, I, they have been asleep for days. I do not know how to help them. If it is all I can do to keep them alive on good berries. Oh. How do you how do you know of what is happening? We're scrying on you right now. There's an invisible sensor watching your every move. Um, on about a three second delay, you start seeing her look up. <laughs> <laughs> don't wait. Don't worry. We see you. Listen. Uh, you see the groundhog. 
Yes, yes, R Rupert, Rupert. Lambert on the heel. Yes, he's our friend. We, uh, I tried to scry, I tried to do the sending spell on him, and I couldn't get a response. So we scryed on the location, found you, and now we're talking to you. What help do you need right now? Like, what do you think could break this enchantment? Do you need, uh, like, a giant dispel magic? Like, what's going on do, that you think would help? Is this a curse? I, I cannot find the source. I have tried every decurse, every removed disease I can think of. I, if it is some type of magic, it must be something doing it. But I, I, can, I dare not leave any of them for a moment. I need you to calm down. Breathe. <sighs> All right. Sorry, it has been days. You're, hey, you're a fae. That's fine, right? You're a fae, right? You look like yes. a fae. Yes, I am fae. I do not require right. sleep, but I am still quite exhausted from ex exuding my magics to I, keep them alive. I want you I want you to eat a good berry. Take a seat. They're not going anywhere. You've already been tending to them. They're going to be fine for a little bit. I need you to focus on the source of the magic. Ignore, ignore the sleepers. They're going to be okay for just a bit. Focus on the source. Where is it coming from? It looks like it's a bit wobbly around here. I can't get a good view of like space and time through the sensor. We're looking yes. at you through a crystal ball right now. It's a little bit fisheye lens. It looks kind of strange. Oh, I um, see. You you have to you have to do this because we're not there. You have to figure out where the source is coming from. Is it the directional thing or is it from nearby, far away? Um, she says yes. Give me. Give me a moment. I will, I will try to focus. And she, she sits down in the center, and closes her eyes, and her ears perk around a little bit. And then she puts us on hold, and we hear elevator music. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, as she is slowly listening, you see her look up to the left, and she says. No, what are you? What are you? <sighs> and she falls over asleep. And your the scrying orb goes out. The scrying orb goes out. Mm-hmm. And I can't make it go black, but uh We're please just close that. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna uh, close okay. That. Can we All bring right. up whatever map is relevant? I yes, to... I can, absolutely can. Yeah. Not a problem. Thank you. But yes, close the one with that showed her because sure vision is now gone. You're back on the. By the way, you're on the Windseeker. Uh, all of this was kind of in the belly yeah. of the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so and did we get a? Uh, we've got a location though, right? She said she's from Crystalhurst. Uh, give me societies in the tower, everybody. Yeah, I actually have society. I'm not as good as Reese or Khan, I think, but I might get a high roll. Uh, Reese. God damn, your bonus is ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, but Khan rolled the highest, actually. Wow. Khan, you know, you've heard of Crystalhurst, actually. It's a, a community in the south fa southern Fangwood Forest to the west of Lake and Carthen. Uh, Druma is on the southern tip of Lake and Carthen. That's the northern part. That's where you were just at, at the beach, was the, ah. the beach of la this big lake. It's just off the map to the southeast on this map. You can't quite see it. Here, I'll show you a bigger map to get Isn't you Isn't Belkson to the west or whatever? To the north. To the north, got it. Yeah. Here's the bigger map. Uh, ah, that big I see. lake in the middle is Lake and Carthen. Druma is sort of on the southeast, and then near Mathas is the land where Crystalhurst is. It's a big forest near near Mathis. Okay. Uh, I look to you guys and I'm like, I got one more call before I have to kind of hang up the phone for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, should well, we it, it seems like we should set a set of calls to where uh, to where this is, to the northeast. We were gonna. Northwest. I mean, it's I, roughly it in the direction you're going anyway. Uh, yeah, you're heading northwest, reason. and you know what okay. else? It's near Fogton. Oh! If you're successful, you could get some cold ones. We can get cold ones and race. Could go kiss Gurkha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's set a course, uh, Anyanka. Oh, yes. Uh, Adelina, uh, we have a course to Nermathis. It's on the way to the north, but uh, there's been a wrinkle. We have to iron this out. Oh, not the problem. I could, I've heard of Nermathis before. Uh, let me go. You know, it's, it's the damnedest thing. I've been 
trying to follow this sun all day and it just keeps seeming like it's bouncing around but that uh, you know i'll see what i can do near Matas. here we go 44 that's pretty damn good <laughs> <laughs> um so yes yeah, so you i just keep hearing hing der ding der dung der ding der ding der ding so yeah i i modeled it after the leif erickson day from spongebob squarepants uh but you are headed off from Druma. You were well on your way to the north anyway, so it isn't much of a detour to get to this place. Um, let me see here. Gotta get rid of that. No, this. Okay. Uh, and with being on an airship, it does not take you super long to find where you need to go. Uh, especially with Khan's super high role, knowing where this place is. You are flying over this forest, and from this vantage point, it actually becomes quite easy to see. You recognize, however, that from the ground level, this would be an exceedingly difficult little glade to find. But between all of your scrying, your role for society knowing where this was, and Gunnar's really high role for <laughs> uh, navigating, without much effort, you are able to find this glade, uh, just for sake of brevity. So what I'm going to do is... If you would like, you may take an NPC with you, one of the th one of the three of the wind seekers. Um yeah, two will stay up there. I, if we're doing dealing with primal magic, and maybe Yanka. on Yanka. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. Okay, so let me take Adelina off the tracker and Gunnar off the tracker. Cool. So you're able to find this beautiful glade. It looks like autumn and spring at the same time. There are beautiful flowers growing on the ground, but there's crispy leaves everywhere up on the trees. Mm. Uh, crispy yeah. weaves. Crispy weaves. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, a gently babbling brook that uh, passes in front of you with a beautiful hand-carved uh, bridge. And across the way is a ring of trees. That From here, you can obviously see what's there, but from your vantage point as characters, you cannot see through those trees. This, this seems like the right place. It looks just like it did in my, my scrying spell. Hmm. I have a spell that could maybe give us a bit of insight on what happened before we go forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been studying some elemental magic on the side. I've got so much going on. Literally, there's a new book that came out called Rage of the Elements. Uh, it released yeah. a bunch of new spells. So <laughs> there's one called Misty Memory I want to try out. Mm -hmm. uh, to cast it, uh, it's a fourth level spell, takes a minute. I target a body of water uh, of at least five square feet. Hey, look at that. There's a river right here. Hey, look at that. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the <laughs> river and I can sustain the spell for 10 minutes. Say, some say water holds memories or impressions of the past and you can raise those memories to the surface to glimpse recent events. When you cast the spell, you fix your mind on an amount of time in the past up to 24 hours ago. A mist rises from the target body of water, filling a 30 foot burst and coalescing into a misty scene of the events that took place at the time within 60 feet of the water. Pretty sure that that little circle is within 60 feet. And I'm pretty sure it's been less than 24 hours since we had that phone call. So, any creature who can see the area can observe the images produced, which are translucent white color and detailed enough to show a silhouette, outline, or contour of creatures and objects that pass through the area and the motions they took. Fine details, such as facial features or written letters, are too precise for the mist to form, and the scene is silent. You can sustain the spell to cause the mist to play events backward or forward, with each minute spent uh, sustaining the uh, corresponding minute of playback. Strong winds can get rid of it. Um, but okay. essentially, I would like to know what happened during our phone call. Sure. Not a problem. Oh, that's a very cool spell. <laughs> yeah, I got right? rid of that. That's very cool. Uh, but I'm into it. So the mists rise and swirl around each other from this river. And they kind of dance. And they sort of lead you away from the river north towards that ring of trees. I might even be able to put a... Let's see if I have a fog or mist that I can just throw in here for fun. Oh, I do. Look at that little... Boop. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, so I'll, like, sustain the spell and kind of walk forward a little bit quietly. I don't want to... Uh... I mean, I we're not really stealthing, and I know it's, like... If anyone wants to stealth, you can. I mean, Reese yeah. has quiet things. 
Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Like we could, uh, Go for we could definitely it. use, um, these. Oh, Anyonka's quite stealthy too. That's cool. Any enemies in the vicinity would see the, the cloud, but maybe not see us. Is that right. um, yeah. Is Swift Sneak for the whole group, or is it just me? That's just me. That's just you. Then I think Warden Step will do that. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right, so you're all able to make it across this somewhat creaky bridge, but uh, following that fog there, it eventually leads you to a ring of trees, and Khan... You recognize this canopy, this ring of crunchy golden leaves above your head. Um, Reese, you also recognize it because as you looked up in your dream, you saw four points of light aligned with three mismatched points. This is the ring of trees you were looking up through. But the fog itself, once you get into that area, you see all of the animals you saw in your call, all asleep. You see the the satyr asleep and the fog kind of condenses down onto their bodies makes an imprint of them and it, it's sort of like a shell across all of them but you see one bit of fog raise up it's a strange creature very lithe and long and you see another f- creature made of fog that's clearly uh the satyr the archdruid the archdruid yeah. and this the creature comes behind the archdruid, moves its tentacle-like fingers, and she falls over. And then it crawls over her, and with its fingers above her head, begins to go like this, pulling thoughts from her head. These filaments and wisps pull out of her head from the ground. And the creature is taking them and putting them to its mouth. Can we make a check to see if we know what this is? Yes. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, it's probably a cult or a Kana. I would assume. Oh, let's do. I'm going to do an occult check personally. Tower, please. I just realized I was muted. I did Arcana. Oh, nice. Ah, Icon dominated that role. Holy crap. Uh, yeah, you got a 46 Arcana. So, Con, that sounds like an animate dream. Oh. Sometimes the realm of dreams is an offshoot of the ethereal realm, the ethereal plane. It's very, very close. Sometimes they kind of bump into each other. And sometimes they bump into each other hard enough that they hit the material plane. And when that happens, it creates an animate dream from some type of powerful creature. Usually it's like a wizard or, a, you know, some really powerful creature. But you're starting to realize... It might be from three of you. What? All of you dreamt of this place. Or dreams were We're the bad guys? Are you telling me we're the bad guys? (laughs) I won't stand for it. This is slander and uh, libel. In case there are any angels listening. (laughs) Well, what do you think we should do, Khan? Uh, Brain, tell me how to kill it. (laughs) (laughs) You got the highest check. You should know. (laughs) You could attempt to call it out. They eat dreams, do they not? Perhaps we could bait it. By having one of us go to sleep? It could work. Maybe me. Perhaps Risp. No, maybe not Risp. I mean, you guys want to feel wet socks? Uh, no. <laughs> exactly. Never. I th- I don't think I'll ever, ever in my life ever want to feel wet socks. No, it's the worst feeling in the world. It really is. That's why Reese is just so grumpy today. Uh, okay. Let's think about how we're going to then proceed. We need someone to fall asleep. And this thing will come and consume the dreams, sort of like a haunter from Pokemon. This is a book I read. (laughs) (laughs) Poking man. Love it. Pokemans. Yes. 
Pokemon's Pocket Monsters. <laughs> Pocket Monsters are the champions. Are the champions. I think that's how the little song goes. <laughs> in the book? In the book? Yeah, in the book. <laughs> it's it's the lyrics of the song in the book. Yes, and yes. there's notation and everything. It's great. Uh, <laughs> Zafid's like a big fucking Pokemon nerd. That would be, he would. He would be, though. <laughs> He would make YouTube videos complaining about like the most recent games and like yeah, features would. that they didn't have. <laughs> that the old games had. I feel like Zavid would actually do like uh, card unboxings or like that up too. Uh, oh my yes. god! <laughs> Absolutely. Look at my foil-backed Charizard. He's got the oh gloves god. and everything, and he's like, "Here's this one." Okay. And this is where he's just mumbling the whole time. He's like, <laughs> yeah. "All right, very good." Oh, this, this one nice. has this the nice. hologram on <laughs> it. Prices. Anyways, I'm distracting us. <laughs> <laughs> who's who's okay? Who's brain? Mm. <laughs> oh, once one of us falls asleep, I don't know if this thing can be you know easily stabbed to death. It's got to be either you or me, Khan. And I think, I think because Khan... Reese, you're an elf, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then but... uh, Anyanka's undead, so it's got to be you or me. I'll do it. I, I, I'll, I think Khan I'll, I'll is the sleep. safest. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll... I had the happiest <sighs> one out of all of us anyway. You did, you did. Um, do we have a spell of sleep? A sleep spell? Oh, hey, I know how to cast that. It's just a fourth level. Oh, no problem here. Uh, uh, just get all nice and comfy cozy here on the floor. Uh, she, she kind of all right, up now is a it a, wall. is it an AOE or is it a target? It's a great question. Let's find out. Uh, Please be an AOE. Five foot <laughs> burst. Yeah, five foot burst. Uh, uh, fourth level. Creature falls unconscious. Yeah, five foot burst. For the story, can I be like accidentally in the field, like uh, <laughs> like maybe a bug like lands on Khan or something like a praying mantis and I'm like oh hold on let me get that and I like fall over uh, <laughs> it doesn't have to happen but it would be kind of funny super funny but uh, yeah you you just get in the very corner of it so you kind of have that micro sleep where you just <laughs> and then you're yeah I like awake. I fall over <laughs> on my back yeah <laughs> but Khan uh, if you are willing to be a wheeling participant, you don't need to roll a DC saving throw. Gotcha. Uh, just get yourself comfy so you don't fall over. You got and it. And Khan, you pass out immediately. I roll down the hill and then wake up when I, my head hits a tree. Uh. <laughs> Onyanka backs up behind a tree. Excuse me. Um, and before long, you do see movement wiggly air around that sort of begins to coalesce into sort of an invisible roughly humanoid shape over Khan and you can see Khan laying on the ground and just looking at her you see her in her throat invisibly go as though someone is grabbing it and then you see uh, her head kind of bob up and down on the ground I want to okay does this thing seem like an elemental? No. No. I want to cast Paralyze. Paralyze, huh? Let me see here. Is it, it immune to this condition? <laughs> Let me look. Let me look. It has, it's a science experiment. It has a number of immunities. And what word are you casting? Paralyze. Paralyze. Per, I think that's what it's called. Paralyze. It is one of them. Here. Yes. <sighs> no. Uh, you'll be wasting a spell, unfortunately. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Uh, However, I go fuck it, and I'm gonna. Uh, well, hold on. Yeah, it gets a, no, what go is ahead. it gonna do? What are you doing? What are you? What's the fuck? Oh, I was like? gonna do spirit blast or like ah. rip the spirit, whatever it's called. <laughs> well, let me let me look that one up. Yeah, as you your spell fizzles, it begins to take form, <laughs> and you can see this invisible form look directly at you and it looks down at Khan and Reese even up in your tree it looks directly up at you and it I'm begins I'm gonna do predictable cool I think that takes a second but sure um, but what appears before you this invisible form begins to grow and elongate 
and come into view. And it, <clears throat> its wings unfurl. Its long snake-like tail cr fully extends behind it. A oh, swarm of swirling insects begins to fly around it mm. as it appears in front of you. Please roll initiative. <laughs> An amalgamation of all of our fears. Yes. Wonderful. Yes, that is what it is. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, Thank you. Initiative A. Ooh, uh, uh, all right. Second. Let's. Eh. Man, this Great. is this sucks. <laughs> Dark Souls music begins to play. A health bar at the bottom shows up. <laughs> Celestial Naga Swarm Keeper. Like, oh god. Yeah, I'll roll my sleepy perception. Uh, sleepy initiative, I mean. Uh, Con, <laughs> so high. <laughs> since I always forget, Con, would you like to use your WOG spell to give everyone bonuses? Because if it's, it's a initiative. conscious choice, I can't because I'm asleep. That's right, you fell asleep. But, you did. But wait a second, wait a second. We knew that something like this could happen. Would That's you true. have thought about this before going to sleep? Like you got it like readied? No. <laughs> That's I forgot and so Con forgot. <laughs> That's fair. fair. That's, yeah. Uh, okay, so I think this is a great place to take an intermission. At the very least, yeah. yes. Okay, yes. Let's take a short little break. Uh, we'll come back in ten to fifteen minutes as Luxet Umbra fights an amalgamation of all of their fears. <laughs> Ooh, we'll be right back.
one. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Bard's Playhouse. When last we left off, Luxa Tumbra was uh, attempting to help their friend Rupert Mount Upon Hill, the awakened gopher in a druid glen out in the near Mathis Forest. But it would appear that some sort of creature of dreams, a dream eater, has uh, overtaken the area and overpowered the druids. Using Khan as bait, uh, they lured the creature out, and it has manifested as an amalgamation of all three of their fears. Ooh. And that's where we're coming back in. And uh, at initiative, it is this thing's turn first, because Zavid attempted to um, cast uh, something at it. Paralyze. Paralyze. But it is immune, unfortunately, so it is going to use one action to sm well, you can't, can't smile with that face, but with many voices simultaneously, you hear it say, Con Rizzolo, using invoke true name, oh. as it casts Nightmare. So Con, please take put a minus two in your modifier and give me a wisdom save. You got it. You're looking for a DC of, uh, let's see, what is it? 38. Yeah, will save? Will save, 38 with a minus two. You got it. You got to think about Ooh. it in this, in this sense. You will save. <laughs> I Look will at save. that. Yes. You rolled a natural 19 for a 39, just barely. As your brain is able to, it's almost like you knew this was coming. You're able to push out this attempt. At, it force tries to force its way into your brain to give you this hideous nightmare. But you managed to get past it. Wow, good job. That was a good one to save. Uh, that's the end of its turn, though, because it used all sunbeam, three. Sunbeam, angel voices, sunbeam, yep. angel voices. Ah! So I want you to, because you saved so well on that, give me another uh, will save to try and wake up from sleep. But this is at on Yonka's DC, which is going to be lower. Uh, and you're not at the minus two. Where is Anyanka? Her DC is probably much lower than that thing's. With her, which you're looking for a 37, one lower. 37 will save. Yep, you got but it. No minus two. No so minus it's two. Technically three easier. Whole another nat 19. Oh my god. With that <laughs> con, you wake up. Uh, and I'm going to say that's the end of your turn. Uh, you use your turn waking up. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's... you know she sees this thing, uh, and she's just, just kind of frozen in surprise and fear. Oh anyway. yeah. Yes, as it is a horrifying sight of this winged angel with a snake body swirling with insects around it. Reese, your turn. Re Con is awake. Good. Well, I'm gonna you know use my walk because I got my yellow eyeshadow on. Um, <laughs> and. Um, I'm pretty much gonna make it my hunted prey. Yep. And I'm just going to talk, like, use my bow from, because I'm still in the tree, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna just, like, go and get a flaming arrow at it. Flaming arrow, okay. So, one second, let me give it this as well. Or do I give that to you? Oh, I give that. Okay, never mind. You're good. Uh, so go ahead and uh, roll the damage. Are the roll to attack? Ugh. Ooh, that's not quite gonna that's do okay. it on your first one. So go for a second. Try that again. Ooh, not quite. Uh, second one goes wide as well. Uh, Reese is not feeling it. Um, but I think. Um, if one action remaining. Let me see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What does this do again? That one that second one got pretty close. It buzzed right by its collarbone. Ugh. Went into the air and went into the river. Um let me see. What does wounding rune again do? Wounding gives bleeding uh, if you crit, I think. Okay. I was just I forgot what that's that on did. one of your that's on from one of your swords. Okay. Um, then yeah, your long sword has yeah that. the long sword. Then I think I'm just gonna do like telekinetic projectile and find like a giant boulder and wait no I can't because oh I yeah know that's two it. actions that's two actions. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'm just gonna you, you could know, try a, go... like a knowledge check to see 
if you could learn anything about this thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that because I am too fucking petrified, apparently. Um, <laughs> sure. Knowledge? No, that would be like, a, let's say, occult or arcana, your choice. Okay. Eh, I'll probably do occult because this thing just freaks of the occult. Okay, put it in the tower. You get the sense that it's probably resistant to most physical t attacks. You'll probably need a specific type of, either a specific type of material or a specific type of enchantment. Uh, you think like an unmagical item is probably not going to hurt this thing. You're probably going to need something specific. But you didn't roll high enough for me to tell you exactly what that is. Yeah, I think uh, Reese is just going to go like, you know what, guys, attack this with your weirdest fucking magic. Physical stuff does not do anything. My arrows went th straight through and nothing happened. So he's just gonna like kind of grumble to himself. Today's been a day f that feels like wet socks. He's he's good. <laughs> he's gonna okay. just he's good. End of your turn. So then you hear a rustling in the trees as a strange creature comes from around the side of it. There's it's just a, a vade. That's a, vade. <laughs> a, a creeping black creature with wings and a spiked oh, tail with fuckers. horns and no face. But it comes around the corner and its speed is not very high. 5, 10, 50, 20, 20, 30. 5, 10, 50, 20, 20, 30. 5, 10, 15, 20. Oh and my can't, god. You can't do anything else because it used all three of its turns to get to you. Uh, this one, number one, however, can get close. It's going to go see it sees. Let's see. Khan is the most ready target on the ground, but it sees that its master is there. Reese has gone, so it's going to go to you. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30. This guy's going to fly up to you in the tree, and it's going to swipe at you with its claws, Reese. Yeah. Ooh, it's going to miss, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, last attack is going to try and tail attack you, tail whip you. And I'm sure it's going to fail. Yeah. 14, yeah, that's, that's a miss. Okay, that brings it to Zavid. Alright. Uh, I need to know if this thing is a construct or if this thing has a spiritual essence. Mm hmm. So, how would I. Alright. In the tower. So, cultism. This is almost assuredly a spirit of some kind. Uh, you're good. like a ghostly apparition. Good, good, good. Do you call out as much or anything? Uh, I'll, I'll say uh, this thing can be hurt with anything that can affect the spirit. And then I will uh, make a ranged attack, ranged spell attack. Oh, do, what's my modifier for that? I, I don't it's pretty even high. Know. Yours is pretty good. Could you, could you mind telling right me what now. it is? Actions, yeah. tab is loading. Cleric, your bonus is 27. Okay. I'm attacking it with a spell. Uh, I want to reroll it. Sure. Hero point? I don't, yeah. Right. I don't, I don't like that roll, so I'll try it again. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 that was a good so hero point. So much better. That was a great use of a hero point. Natural twenty. So, uh, hold. What what is spell is this again? Uh, spirit blast. Oh my God. Okay. So, uh, it's sixteen d six force damage, but it's gonna get crit, right? So that's yeah. So hold the shift key as you drag that sixteen d six on top of its token. All right. Let's see. But is that exact? Doesn't it get a save of some kind? No, it's an attack. You concentrate on dealing the damage because blah blah blah. The possessed creature is her. Okay, sure, whatever. Yeah, great. <laughs> a spirit blast. There you are. Hold on a second. All right. Uh, I am targeting you, your mother fridger, and then hold shift on yes. the on the. Hold shift. Oh my that god! Looks so many. Good god. Uh, That's, uh, so 113 damage. 113. 113 force damage as I rip apart this nightmare spirit, and I I yell at it like uh, I don't yell anything. 
I think I'm too scared. I think I I want this thing gone. I think that's it. I think Zavid sees what's going on, sees that this thing is an amalgamation of our fears, knows that right now it's taunting Khan and Reese, but if it looks at him, he's in trouble because it's going to do some angelic bullshit. So he wants to take it out as quickly as possible. He doesn't taunt it back. He just tries to fucking kill it and gets close, but doesn't quite kill it. He like wounds it. And its face looks snaps to you, Zavid. I think you still have an action, correct? I do. Uh, I use my action to shield and I go, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) So let me give you a shield. That's a plus one. AC plus one for Hurt me. There you go. <laughs> it is going to use a legendary action to look at you, Zavid, and cast a fourth level sleep. So please give me a will save, DC 38. Oh, I will. I will give you a will save, and I will save. Nice. You do happen to save, so it's a success. You take a minus one penalty to perception checks for a round. That's nothing. Okay. I'm drowsy. (sighs) You're drowsy. But that's its legendary action. Bringing it to Anyanka, who says, Oh, spirit damage, eh? I think I know just the trick. And she She starts cast the same spell. Crits again. She starts (laughs) running forward. And as she passes beneath you, Reese, Night Mm -hmm. Gaunt number one lashes out at her with an attack of opportunity with its tail. (gasps) <gasps> there they ops. <gasps> the little ones do. It. So it hits her. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's so funny. So, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> it doesn't deal damage. It star- Oh, wait. She's a skeleton. Yep. She is. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Now, well, it tries to tickle her as she passes beneath it, but she's a skeleton and would be immune to that. So... <laughs> That doesn't do anything. So, Anyanka, just the tickler. It, yeah, it it's speci- it's very weird. These creatures have aops, but only for their tail, and their tail doesn't deal damage. It just does a tickle ability, which like gives you minuses to stuff. It's weird. They're weird. That is weird. Okay, yeah. really I'm ro- weird I'm running those all... creatures. I'm running as written. Uh, it's okay, the, it's the other thing I made up. I don't know what uh, Kate, like where the night god comes from, but I have one that I ran in the House of Lament, if you recall. It was the thing with no face. It had like a sh- like a mirrored, shiny face with Freddy, mm-hmm. Freddy, Freddy Krueger claws. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it... Gross. I was just thinking, oh man, the night god must be real thing because I pulled that from somewhere. Mm-hmm. And now you've got something, you're running by the book, it has no face. And I yeah. just, it dawned on me in all, all its tragedy, that Slender Man must be a Night Gaunt, which is yeah. sad. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, those creatures I'm running as written, they're weird. Uh, but yeah, Anyanka runs up to you, takes a weird tickle uh, <laughs> type AOP, and she runs up to you, Khan, as you're laying on the ground, just waking up, and she says, Here, this might help with some ghosts with your spirits. And she casts Ghostly Weapon on you, Khan. <laughs> Bringing it to one of these... That's the end of her turn, makes it a gaunt. There's no way it can get to you guys in time, so it's actually gonna go into this little, oh, not her, into this g- glade here. And it's it leans down on top of the archdruid and begins to pull out filaments from her brain, the, 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 the dream she's having. That's the end of its turn. Making it this one, uh, it sees what's going on. So it's going to run into 5, 10, 15, 20. But it's kind of scared of that thing. So it's going to take the long way around and come up next to uh, Anyanka here and swipe out at her with its claws. Cha cha cha! Cha cha cha! And actually hit. Wonderful. Actually doing some damage! Hooray! <laughs> That's dealing 21 damage to her. That's great. Uh, end of her. its turn makes it the top of the round that makes it this creature and i forgot last round you're lucky i forgot that it is quickened this thing actually has four actions per round let me see here yes okay it has reach so it is going to reach out to you zavid and firstly Mm. it is going to slash at you with its claws with its nightmare claws what 
I call cheats. I call hacks. <laughs> oh yes. Ah, even with my natural. I rolled a fifty-two. That's bullshit. You can't do that. <laughs> You're not allowed to roll a fifty-two. You take thirty-five damage. You that's, wounded that's, me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, that. That's uh, karma for one. I didn't know that could happen. <laughs> so you take. 35 negative damage. Oh, don't you don't you avoid I have a uh, yeah, negative 8. Um so I could reduce that heal by up, eight. Go, if you could heal yourself up that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you put me at 27 instead. And then it is going you automatically experience endless nightmare. So I need a 30, DC 38 fortitude save from you as the it your its touch fills your mind with terrifying visions. Ooh, I'm not 28. I'm not using a hero That is point. a critical Let's... failure. Let's do it. All right. You, that is immediately stage two. This is a curse. You are now fatigued and stupefied one for a day. That's just so. me normally. <laughs> <laughs> so fatigued on Zavid. And then what was the other one? Stupefied. Well, that's a bad one. That's a bad one, yeah. Stupefied. As it slashes you and your mind is filled with these visions of your final judgment. This thing is, it looks to you and says, your your judgment is nigh, and it uses um. One sec. Yeah, uses a second action to grab you, which since it burns in action, you don't get to roll against it. Hmm. Its third action is to use rebuke soul. The celestial Naga Swarmkeeper <laughs> speaks a word to cause a creature's soul to recoil at its sin, or an undead creature to recoil at its lack of a soul. One non-good living or undead target within 40 feet takes 5d10 good damage and must attempt a DC 38 fort save. So fortitude save 38, please. It's using an angel ability? Because I'm afraid. That's so fucked. That's <laughs> fucked up. All right. Thank what you. do I got to do? Uh, will? DC 38 fortitude. Fortitude. Oh, shit. It's rebuking Why your couldn't soul. you have a normal fear like snakes? Then it could be great. <laughs> so. I know, right? <laughs> My fear makes sense, all right? <laughs> Mine is just, you know... Now this... Oh, oh no! Oh, God. I have another hero point. Should I let this thing rebuke my soul? Should I just get bodied by this it would be really nightmare funny. creature? It would be kind of funny. I'm gonna look to you, uh... Eli. Uh-huh. Do you... It, would this kill me? Is this gonna kill me if I don't try to, like... Hang on. Save against it? Let me... Let's see what's that gonna be. I just want to know if I should. No, like, for the story, this could be really interesting. I... I would have to roll, like, max damage to kill you. Okay. All right, I'll take that chance. I'll keep I would, in that like, one. Max, max damage. Okay, so as it rebukes your soul, you take 10d10 good damage. Hit me. 10d10. 51 damage. So Ooh. if you could please give yourself 51 damage as mm -hmm. your brain is racked with images of your final judgment. Every sin you've ever committed, every slight you've ever done comes flooding back to your mind at the same time, hurting your brain. It's 5D, it's uh, 51 good damage, by the way. <laughs> as you, it rebukes your sin. And as a critical failure, you take double damage and you're stunned four. So next round, or your next turn, you do not get to go, and then the turn after that, you only get two actions. That's all right. I got a good crit on him, and then he immediately was like, oh, I can crit too, motherfucker, and did, uh -huh. so it's all right. Yes. So this means that my friends don't get crit, so right. I tanked for people. I feel so good about you it. You absolutely did. Stunned, and that's four. Yikes. Okay. Uh, so, what they see... Do, what you what you guys basically see is like I mean like a flash of like holy light, uh, and Zavid's never looked so small in in the grasp of this thing as like he's not physically reduced, but you could tell like like the light takes away all the shadows that are on his face, making him look like he's kind of like the illusion of when you're in Hawaii at high noon or whatever. And like all the shadows are like the sun's directly above everything and there's no shadow on it. No shadows on him. He just looks like he's just this like little action figure in this thing's mitts, essentially like Almost unreal like in a sense. That little, yeah. little Volmort. Uh, and he, uh, he cries out. I'm not going to do the cry. Uh, but it's 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 a very sad, vulnerable cry out. 
All of you hear this, and Khan, you're up. With a fresh ghost weapon. The fresh ghost weapon. Um, ugh, I'm gonna cast haste on myself. Very smart. Uh, go ahead and do that, and I will put that on your action here. Haste. There you uh, go. Pawn tries to, like, steal herself, uh, and she's gonna try to, like, bounce up the coils of its tail to get to its arm to try to, like, I don't know, chop its arm off or something like that. Sweet. Uh, it is not gonna be flat-footed to you. Well, that's, that's... fine because of my new Sly Striker ability. <gasps> that's right! How does that work again? Uh, because I'm level 14... Uh, I can do an extra 2d6 precision, precision damage to creatures that are not flat-footed. Perfect. It doesn't add to my sneak attack bonus when they are. It's just like, in case I can't induce I got you. sneak attack. Okay, great. So go ahead and roll your attack. You got it. Uh, question. When they did predictable, mm. was it on this thing or the weird brain ED thing? That's up to you. Okay. Oh, that was almost really good. That was almost really almost good. Almost a 17, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, is it a movement action to, like, get up to its arm? Yeah. Well, nah. All right. It's kind of, it's down near you. It was kind of eating your, your dreams a moment ago, and then it just kind of lashed out at Zavid, and it's still sort of down near you. Yeah. Then I'll use my, my hasted action to... <laughs> there it Holy is! Holy shit, yes. There it is. Okay. That's 20 days. Yep, so go ahead and roll that damage. And then an extra 4d6? Uh, and precision damage from Slice Striker? Normally, yes. However, you as you think you're trying to twist the blade, something within this creature stops the knife from twisting. It is immune to precision damage. <gasps> Khan's ultimate fucking nightmare. <gasps> Welcome to season four, motherfucker. Yeah! That's, <laughs> you're a genius. That's so funny. <laughs> we'll give him that. Yeah. So that's the end of your turn. Haste, miss, crit. You still got a crit. You still <laughs> did 54 damage. That was great. Some of, but, but some of that some of that is precision damage. Oh, is it? Let's see. Yeah. Some well, of that's acid. Some of it's ghost touch. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I P8. like that. Oh, there we yeah, the the eight of it. So I'm gonna I have to give it eight hit points back, mm -hmm. which is not that many. <laughs> it's it's almost like the thing is more of a spiritual mass of energy oh. that's taking a shape, but doesn't have like organs or anything. I like will that. tell you this: it would have been bloodied if uh, that precision had gone through, but it is so it is very close to bloodied. I'll tell you that. But that's the end of your turn, Khan. Yeah, you, learned, you like, just learned something very important. Yeah, her heart like sinks a bit when you know the blade doesn't sink in as deep as she thought it would. When it you know logically would have every reason to, but uh, ghost. Mm -hmm. Anyways, and, Reese. And Reese, it is your turn, and you just realized that uh, this ghost touch weapon just did real good damage. Uh, unfortunately, a thirty nine is a miss, but you're wagging, so you still get another at your, phone, yep. your highest bonus. There we what? go. It's <laughs> a critical. He's coming in with the net twenty on the uh, with the bow on a it ghost took touch arrow. Three misses. Hey, but now you. But you also the first two arrows you were using the wrong type. It would have. That is true. It, it would have absorbed fifteen points of damage per arrow, even if you'd hit. You 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 crit with the correct arrow. That's what's important. Are so you... roll that attack. This should be gnarly. Because it, it should be, should I do, is it the shift click? No, no, it should automatically this time, because you actually rolled a legitimate critical. There it is. Oh, yay. Ooh. Woo! Uh, three. Four of that does not go through the pr the precision, so I'm going to give That's it four okay. hit points back. Yep. Can I opportune back? Yes, you can. Oh my god, I can do that now, too. Uh, you are not in melee with it. So no, I know, you can, but, but in not the right future. In, yes, in the future you can, but not in this instance, but... Uh, Con, that absolutely triggers yours. If it oh, was, was another, almost another 20. 20. If it was another, I would have. That was close. It. That would have been amazing. But uh, you do hit with a 43. Mm -hmm. So roll your damage. 
that worked correctly. No precision went through. So 24 damage still went through. This thing is already looking pretty bad, actually. You are slicing it up. And I have one more action. Yes. I know I have limited ghost touch arrows, so I'm going to instead... Um, there's the night gaunt behind me. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take my... Uh, the, the gill hook and whap it at it. Oh yeah, great. It's going to be your lowest, but yeah, go ahead and try to attack. These things are relatively low leveled, if memory serves. Yeah. yeah force a natural four on your lowest still hits. So <laughs> these are like level ten creatures. Absolutely. They're more of an a, nu a nuisance than anything. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty seven. You stab into that thing. Uh, oh, dealing God. Oh. <laughs> that is the end of your turn, Reese. Bring it to this guy. It is going to sidle up. Oh, it's going to swing up to Khan and swipe at you with its claws, seeing that you you did some serious damage to its master. Going to miss. Then going to try attacking you with its tail to see if it can maybe tickle you, Khan. <laughs> tickle, tickle, tickle. <laughs> tickle, not misses. Damn. Nope. I wanted to see what that does. <laughs> it's such a weird ability. Uh, Reese, just because I really just want to see what it does. So, Reese, I'm going to try and tickle you with its tail oh ah, yes it's tickle bitch tickle ability the night gaunt can use its tail to tickle the foe with horrible efficiency a creature hit by its strike a tail strike must attempt a dc 33 fortitude save which i'm sure you're gonna ace uh yeah so roll a 33 fortitude save please yeah i'm good 38? Yeah, you're good. So success, you're overcome with laughter and can't perform, perform reactions for one round. That's so, funny. yeah, you you have your reaction removed. <clears throat> it's something useful. Then it's going to try and attack you with its claws, though. Okay. Gonna miss. Oh! Oh, it ah, hit! Nat 18! Oh. gonna hit. Yeah, 19 damage to you, Reese. That is all it can do, though. And That's turns, cute. It brings but, it to okay. Zabib. I think probably the thing drops me on the ground, and I just, like, curl up in the fetal position, and that's my turn. Oh, yeah, you were fully stunned. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, so now let me change your stun value to one. So next turn, you will have two actions. Uh, and it is now its legendary action... So the Naga Swarm Keeper, what do I want it to do? There we go, that's what I want it to do. Seeing you in the trees, Reese, and having just taken that crit arrow from you, a mouth forms as it just casts Vomit Swarm at you. Oh! I need you to roll me a reflex save, DC 38. As bugs and mosquitoes and 39. bees and hornets, you succeed, but not critically. So what happens? You are going to take half damage, uh, and that's going to be it. Uh, half damage and sickened one. Yeah, that checks out. So you take how much damage? Half of... Oh, sorry, that was not supposed to be to Zavid. Uh, give yourself 36 hit points back, Zavid, sorry. <laughs> You're making him while he's down. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that was not meant for Zavid. Uh, if you could heal yourself, please. Uh, so, Reese, you're going to take 18. I oh, that's can... okay. That's not too bad. You uh -huh. had a really high roll. Wait a minute. Do you have... Hold up. You might have an ability that helps here. Uh, combat. Please uh, check uh, if I do have a Improved lot. evasion? Yeah. You have improved <laughs> evasion. When you get an, a normal... Con, you have this as well. When either of you get a normal success on a deck save, it becomes a critical success. You take no damage oh, as, you kind of, as you kind of backflip out of the way. Yep. Uh, you duck behind the tree, and this blast of disgusting insects goes past you on either side. Uh, oh, so, disgusting. Yeah. You are not sickened, and you take no damage from that. Good. Great. That was its legendary action. Bring to Anyanka. Okay, shit. I forgot. I did have, forgot about her. I don't know what, what I want her to do. Who? Okay. Goodness, she has a lot of spells. Oh god. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm not entirely sure what to do here, but uh, ah, I'll try this. And she's just going to 
panic cast an 8th level ice storm in a 5 foot burst on this thing, so it needs to make a reflex save. As a huge blast of arctic wind... Oh, she rolled a natural 3? Hers is a 37, it rolled a 39, that's a success. So, half damage. Oh shit, Con, sorry. I didn't mean to give you that. There, I fixed it. I fixed it. Uh, but it takes 15 cold damage, unless it is immune to that. Yaka, betrayal! <laughs> I keep forgetting the, everything has uh, um, targeted. People, everything has people targeted. Uh, but oh damn, it has a resistance of 15 to... Uh, uh, at this point, you've all figured it out. It has resistance to all 15, except for Ghost Touch and Force and Negative Damage. It doesn't so, have resistance to negative? Nope. Uh, but cool. Anyanka found out that it has resistance to ice, and so her half 15 gets absorbed by its 15 resistance. So that actually does nothing goes through on that spell, but now she knows. This creature begins to move, uh, yeah, it begins eating further from the, dru the arch druid's dreams, and a after a moment, moves over to Rupert, but it does not have the action economy to begin eating its dream, you see it. Uh, this one, however, is going to attempt to attack uh, on, Yon uh, on Yonka first, probably gonna miss, yep, then swipe out at Zavid with its claw, again, probably gonna miss. Ooh, 15. I'll take it. And does 24 slashing uh, damage to you, Zavid. And we use its third attack to, or third action to grab you. So you are now grabbed. Cool. End of its turn. That brings it to top of the round. It is the, actually this thing's turn now, and it is not looking great. So what it's going to do is, oh, uh, you're not going to like this. Um... <laughs> Are we gonna like any of them? Nah, probably not. Let's see. So, firstly, Khan, it's gonna swipe down at you with its nightmare claw. Yes, nightmare yes. claw okay. attack. Nightmare claw, go! So, it does 26 negative damage to you, Khan. Mm -hmm. It uses its second action to grab you. And it's, uh, yes. So, you are now grabbed. Let me drop that on you. Which means you can't move. That's really the only thing that it uh, affects, is you can't move from gotcha. that spot. Give, me the, give me the nightmare blast. Do yep. your worst. I'm doing it. Uh, come on. <laughs> grabbed on con. There we go. And then with its third action, it's going to use rapid coils. The, the celestial Naga Swarm Keeper moves the creature into its coils, freeing its hands to make attacks and cast spells, then uses greater constrict against the creature. Uh, oh. So... DC 38 Fortitude save, Con. Mm hmm I'm not great at the Fortitude. I, I kind of hope I fail this. It'd be really funny. 38. Oh yes! my god! <laughs> <laughs> that one crew! That one, let's go! One crew. This would be kind of this funny. Is, this We're thing is weird. Like, we are weird. <laughs> the nightmare has decided, or the dice have decided that this thing is truly y'all's fucking nightmare. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's going to be 12 d10. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So its arm turns into like the body of like a like an mm -hmm. anaconda and wraps around. Yep, that's literally oh the God. snake I gave to her in her story is anaconda. That's so funny. Mm -hmm. But yes, it that's, that's what is her uncle. Yep, her uncle died from an anaconda incident. Oh, no. oh no. Begins to squeeze you, Khan, as you take 56 bludgeoning damage. <laughs> There's just strangled squeaking. Which so I can't I've... replicate. <laughs> <laughs> I've given you that damage there, Khan. But, Thank you. Uh, and it has, I keep forgetting it has quickened, so it has one action left. Oh, yeah, that's on... It's going to swipe out at Onyanka, but it takes a penalty. But it can't do any of its extra fancy stuff. It's just one. Oh, not 20, though. So <laughs> it can still crit her, but it can't do any of the extra shit. So Onyanka takes 34 negative damage as it <laughs> slashes out. That puts it to Khan. Uh, you I'm are in, I'm in, in this snake, thing's coils. Snake Town, USA. Yes, let's see. There's ways to get out of it. Wrapping coils. Uh, let's see. How, how do you get out? 
out. <laughs> I th oh yeah, you can just make checks, uh, acrobatics or es or escape checks. So yeah. you can roll. You can use actions, and you're looking for a forty. You I got it. Or wait, you know you. you let me see here. Forty-two. Forty-two. Okay. Yes. Uh, Con will try to worm her way out with acrobatics. Great. Uh, and she can't assurance her way out of this. I, I was hoping high. not. Okay, okay. good. <laughs> Oh, not enough. You can not keep enough. trying, uh, but you have to burn actions. That's fine. Uh, Khan is just desperately trying to get out of there. Looks like you need a natural 14. Natural 14. <laughs> natural 2. Do, do you want my, uh, do you want an inspiration or a hero point for this? No, I think this is hilarious. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Y'all haven't been uh, this affected by something in a while. This is great. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a big fan of Khan there being it is. in danger. All right, so Khan, you are able to pop out just in the as your breath was starting to go. I'll take away your grab. And, oh, you're hasted. You have one action. Yeah. Uh, just like it, it's. Uh, I feel like it's more like her claws scratching, but uh, just to get out. But can I? I'm gonna make a strike against this thing. Yeah, go for with it. With my sword. Swad. Swad. Reese, you're on Swad. deck. Woo! 18 will do it. 47. That's a hit. Yeah. With your ghost touch weapon. Okay, 21 more damage. That's pretty good. It's looking pretty bad. Uh, it's not like on Death's Door, but it's not looking hot. Uh, Reese, you are up. Excellent. Excellent. So with that, Reese is going to go and pop another uh, arrow at this baddie. Yeah, yeah, baddie, baddie. That hits. Yeah, oh, 42. That is precisely its AC. Perfect. So the lowest I can roll is a 13. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to. This is, this is a boss. It has legendary actions and shit. <laughs> <laughs> 22 damage as you sink in an arrow. <laughs> ah! Oh, that's not going to yeah, hit. Yeah, that one goes wide. No. <laughs> Two and I'm going to go and. Take the gill hook again and go just stab the knight guard behind me. Nice. So second or last penalty, last penalty. That's a crit. <laughs> yeah. Again, so level I'm ten creatures. Just, you know. So roll damage first. I thought it was. It had been too long since I'd given you a, a new weapon. Oh, so sixty-nine so damage. Fun. Nice. 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 Oh, nice. <laughs> In this deep. thing is on death's door. Yeah. Ooh, this yeah, one and you have one action left. Um, with one action left, I think can I do another stab at low with it? Oh yeah, yeah. It's just at them lowest again. It doesn't go any lower than that that number. That one is just a regular hit, but it's still a hit. Yeah, yeah. nine, twenty-eight. I mean, so roll damage. Uh, there you go. Nice. You you skewer this thing, ah, and it <sighs> turns into. It's probably going to show us blood on the map. Of course it does. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Uh, but it wisps away into nothingness as it dies. Right. That's the end of your turn. Bring it to this gaunt. Uh, seeing that, it's going to fly up to you, which, mm -hmm. Khan, you do not have attack of opportunity, so you don't get Correct. one. Uh, but that makes you off guard, not flat-footed. I keep forgetting that's the new thing. So then it's going to... So it was one action to fly up. One to claw at you, Reese. Since you killed its brother. That's gonna miss, I'm sure. Yep. And then one more attack. A claw at a penalty. And I think Zavid, you're on deck. That's yep. gonna miss. Yeah. Zavid, yeah, you're up. On the ground, you are stunned one. Uh, so you only have two actions this round, and I will remove your stunned. I think he's putting the baby down or something. Yes, he appears to be AFK. Uh, but Zavid is on the ground, fatigued, stupefied, grabbed in within one of the coils of this snake, actually, uh, being held down. There are no shadows around him, which is very unusual. He looks very small and timid in this moment, unlike any of you have ever seen before. I'm mostly just trying to riff for time, hoping he'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, here we go. Its legendary action is after him anyway, so I'm just going to move it to now to make it take its legendary action yeah. to kill a little bit of time. So let's see. What can it do? What can it do? Uh, go, 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 go. 
How else can you torment yeah, us? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it didn't like... Uh, hmm. Spells. What can I do for spell? Can it only, like, induce uh, nightmares in us if we're asleep? If you're asleep, yeah. yeah. So what it's going to do is it's going to Divine Lance out at Zavid. Since it's on the... He's on the ground. It doesn't even... <laughs> yeah. This thing is a nightmare. What? It's going gonna, it's gonna to shoot a Divine Lance down at Zavid while he's on the ground. There we go. A bolt of pure... Go Ooh! And a <laughs> Wait, no, 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 no. That should have been much higher. That was a natural 19. Why did it not add a 28? 19 plus no. 20. Crit. Don't do it. <laughs> no. Yes. No. Yeah, look, I, I rolled a natural 19, but for some reason it didn't add its bonus. So, Zavid, you get a blast of goodness as a crit and take 20 good damage. <laughs> I rolled a bunch of ones. Uh, so, that was that was its legendary action. Zavid, you're up. I'm stunned one? You are stunned one, so you have two actions this round, and then it'll go away. I'm going to Spirit Blast it again. Oh yeah, fuck it up, dude. Uh, I need to roll... Do I have a d reduction to my attack? Uh, you're stupefied, so that'll already take it into account. So if I put plus 27... Oh, I guess I should just use the... Yeah. Yeah. Actual spell. Hold on. Okay. Is it on there? Spirit Blast? Yeah, yes. here we go. Uh, oh, it's a Fortitude DC. Is it? I yeah, it's a Fort Save. So drop that Fort Save on top of it. Oh, does it? Yeah. Uh, let's see. You concentrate, blah, 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 because spirit... Uh, yeah. Oh, so you can throw basic fortitude. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, oh, no problem. Made... I'll let the other one stand. But, okay. uh, yeah, so make it roll that fort oh, save. Wait, wait, wait. I don't roll. I don't roll then. They have to roll. Sorry. Uh, sorry, they have to No, roll. you did it correctly. You made it roll. I'll just remind you, you have a uh, lucky git. You could make it roll at disadvantage. If you I'm going to make focus it roll point. at disadvantage, please. Okay, so make it try again. Okay. Okay, so it's going to be the regular one. So just roll the damage in the chat, and I'll cut it in half. Okay. So yeah, it still gets half damage. Whew. Uh, so 57, that's 25 plus 3 is 28. Or 23. No, yeah, 28. 28. So... Oh, it's close. So I like... I'm being assaulted by good, which I imagine feels like I'm reliving all of the traumatic experiences I was forced to partake in of like eating someone's flesh and killing people. There are things that I like did on purpose, especially when I was like before I met this group and when I was surviving in the Darklands, like I think I might have like killed someone that maybe wasn't bad, but like I was so scared and trying to survive that maybe like this deep gnome that I like fucking that <laughs> shanked in the neck or something. I was like, I'm hungry. I need to eat. I grab whatever they had and I like, you know, st st like for crimes that I was in such a, a, a crazed state of mind. Like I forgot, but it was really just to survive. And like, I'm being reminded of with this like good stuff. Like you did this, you did this. And then of course the stuff I did since becoming uh, the Umbromancer and just like, um, stuff that I know that the gods are sort of just not paying attention to because they know it's in service to like fighting Rovergood, but the little things of like any way in which I haven't been perfect, all my imperfections, all the ways that Zavid is just not Demirius or not someone of like repute. But I think seeing the coils around uh Khan and she's like and then like like dislocates her fucking shoulder like get out of the thing and starts stabbing I think I'm realizing this isn't a real angel this is a thing of nightmare this is a thing replicating these things to torment us and I have been trying my best to be good and to do good ever since I saw the sun for the first time and this thing, maybe an angel can't be reasoned with, but this thing is no angel. And so I shouldn't treat it like one. And so I, I do a spirit blast and I say, uh, let go of her, you fucking imposter. And I blast off a chunk of essence. Um, and I'm trying to, trying to take control back in this moment. 
Great. I think you have one action left. No, I had only two. Remember? Oh, that's right. Yeah, you were. Now you are no longer stunned, though. Uh, mm -hmm. Used its legendary action on Yonka's turn. She's gonna say, "I don't think my magics are getting through." Reese, duck. It, it, try negative damage if you have it. I don't have it, Reese, duck. And she launches, lobs a fireball at you, Reese. <laughs> trying to take out these other things. So I'm going to force you to make a reflex save, DC 37. If you even get a success, you get a critical success. So Reese, 42, you got a regular success, which is a crit, so it automatically fixed. No, I, I made it roll for you, so ignore that nat 3 you just rolled. <laughs> oh, I think you're muted. Yeah, you're, I think we you're muted. can't hear you. Oh, hell yeah. I'm down there for that. There we go. Now you are. Uh, but yeah, you rolled it. So you have a critical success. And then the other two, one rolled a failure, and the other rolled a failure. So both of them will take full 6d6 damage. As a massive fireball blasts into the tree, giving 23 damage to each of them. And Anyanka is... Uh, yeah, she's going to cast shield as well. Bringing it to this creature. Ah, it begins to start pulling filaments out of the head of Rupert Mound upon a hill and putting the, the thoughts and dreams to its mouth as it's feasting. End of its turn. This one is going to be swiping at you, Reese, because you're, it is flanking with its buddy and this it's, things aren't going super well for it. Manages to hit. Amazing. Doing 18 damage. And it's going to go for broke, but I'm sure after this it's not going to hit. Not nat 5, not going to do it. Then at its maximum penalty, one at 17? Nope, still a miss. Okay. Uh, end of the round, bringing it to the Celestial Naga Swarmkeeper once more. It is pretty desperate at this point. It's pretty low on spells as well, which is not good for it. Uh, yeah, it's going to try this one more time. It's going to swipe down at, at Khan with its Nightmare Claws. Seven? Ooh, it hits. Okay, just enough. Dealing how much? 26 negative damage, Con, as it slashes down. With its second action, it grabs you. And with its third action, attempts to constrict you in its coils once more. So, DC 38 fortitude save. This mm -hmm. time, if you fail, I want you to use my hero point. Oh, okay. Uh, unless you really want to just keep the failure if it happens. 31 right. is a fail, but not a critical fail. Yeah, I'll, t I'll take the hero point. Hell yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're looking for 38. 38. That's fine. That, you can do that. Uh, 34 is still a failure. Can you get it? a circumstantial plus four somehow? Is that a thing? <laughs> oh, Reese. <laughs> Reese. Oh, Reese threw a hero point. All you right. Mean a 13 or higher. 13 or higher. Ah, uh, 35. Uh. Still no... Did All I right. spend my, my hero point already? Was that something um, I did? I don't, I don't recall. Have. Do you have, does it show one on your your sheet? Uh, it says zero hero points. You might not have uh, replaced. Did like, you replace one this morning? Like when we started? I, I don't think I've touched it. Then yeah, you can have one. Yippee. Last one. <laughs> Last one. Last one. And then fate. Mm-hmm. It's a ten. Ah, it's, yeah. fate. it's fate. All right, so you are fate. taking 6d10 bludgeoning damage. Five, six... 35. So, Khan, you take... You are at 143? Yeah, 143 wounds. So you're looking pretty bad. Khan, you're wounded. Your bones are starting to crack inside this thing. It's getting hard to breathe. Uh, and I keep forgetting it's quickened. So it has one more action. Uh, you could try to, like, magically summon a, like, a snake face and try to bite her. True. Uh, but I think what it's going to do is simply just use Constrict Coils again. So please give me one more DC 38 Fortitude save. You got it. Oh, Ten solid rounds! Bring it yeah. on! Bring it on! 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, D10. I've got plenty of bones in my skeleton. 25 more bludgeoning damage, so that's oh, a nod. 165 wounds. Khan is looking pretty bad. Uh, but that's all it can do. Khan, you're up. You are grabbed in this thing's coils, and it is cracking your bones. It's cracking um, your bones. Cracking your bones. Can I make attacks whilst in the coils? Yes, you just can't move. Okay, cool. Um, I think then she's going to, like, try to desperately reach for her sword and then just start 
Mm -hmm. Stabbing right. if she can get an arm free. Let's give that roll. See if you can hit. Oh, yes! that's a hit. Yep. I thought that was going to be a nat four. So did I. <laughs> oh. How do you want to do this? Yes. Okay. I feel like I feel like Khan is completely encased in these coils, mm -hmm. um, and folks are just seeing them kind of shrink down more and more. Um, but there's there's rustling, there's murmuring. You see Khan's blade stick out from the snake coils, and she is actively pushing herself out uh, and climbing through the body of the snake. As it splits into the snake coils, <laughs> releasing Yukon, and this creature, its form disapparates. <laughs> The, the insects go away. The coils disappear into nothingness. The angel wings turn into ash on the ground. And what is left standing before you... Let's see, where is it on the combat tracker? Sorry. There it is. It's a much smaller creature. Very lithe, purple. I have a photo of it here. It has black hair that kind of dances around it and long tentacle-like fingers, but it has yeah. a very gaunt, skinny purple frame. But this is what stands before you. <sighs> but it looks much less confident than it does in that photo. It looks very scared. Ooh. Are we but still, still in have combat three actions, fighting? Khan. Yes, Khan still has three actions. Because you're hasted. Well, I hate this guy. I'm gonna try to just remove this, dis disanimate this dream. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, this thing is a uh, all let oh, spoiler. Sorry, there's <laughs> really strong wind outside my window. It's like the window's getting pelted by like uh like oh, geez. tree leaves and pine needles and stuff like that. Anyway. Oh damn. Uh, spoiler. This thing's a lot weaker than it was a second ago. So go ahead and roll your attack. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not afraid anymore. You don't. You don't have snake arms anymore? Hear me? I'm not afraid anymore! <laughs> That's a crit on a natural 11, so Jesus. go ahead and roll your whole damage on it. But again, this thing this is thing's hard. turn to now feel fear. Yep, this thing is actually also immune to uh, precision, so seven mm -hmm. of that does not go through. But you got it. Look, 49 did, or 42 did. That's still quite a, as you sink your sword into this thing, <laughs> And you still have two actions. Oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, can I, can I clean up here? Yeah, I'm not stepping can, on I, anyone's I think toes. You can, I think you can clean up. Yeah. You still have the uh, two actions. Yeah. yeah, go for it. This thing was all three of your fears. Any of you who conquer it is really conquering the fear. Still a hit on an at eight twenty seven. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, that was real low. Fifteen, but it is looking pretty bad. The last attack also okay. at the lowest penalty. Right out. Ooh, and that one misses miss. on a nat four on the bonus bonus penalty. So end of that, it's Reese. You're up. This little pathetic creature that was a moment ago truly the embodiment of everything you hold as terrifying, is reduced to this little wrapper, this husk. What do you do? I think that... Can Reese tell if any of its weakness changed with... Uh, great question. With, with predictable up? That's a great question. Let me look. Uh, it looks like it is far less resistant, but it looks like it probably has the same- you think it probably has the same resistances, just less. Okay, I'm gonna just fire another arrow at it, like- Ghost touch or yeah, another? ghost touch. Okay, cool. At this point, just to be safe. Yeah, sink it into this thing. Oh! That's gonna crit. Okay, yeah. that's probably- okay, let's see the damage on that. Ah! Ho there oh! There it is! Now, the- now, how do you kill this thing? <clears throat> I think Reese kind of like concentrates and sees his friends being 
bloodied to shit for the first time probably ever at this point. He's not used to being the one that's like standing and everyone else is dying around him. He's used to everything dying around him that isn't his friends. And he releases, and as he releases his arrow, he just goes, never come back. And it's it. And the arrow goes through its head. <laughs> and it falls to the ground. <laughs> and disappears. The other nightmares, <laughs> they screech with a horrible sound and they look around them and they disapparate and disappear. And, and let's see, get rid of all of them. And as they do, the waviness all around you ceases. Zavid collapses on the ground. So does Khan. So does Khan. <laughs> she's, yeah. um, she's giving cornered animal realness right now. <laughs> Reese goes from behind the tree and goes over to them. Oh my goodness, that was... What in the hell was all of that? Ugly. Absolutely ugly. All of our nightmares in one creature. Not yours, but our three. Oh, well, that was the damnedest thing. Yeah. Are all of you alright? I don't want to see another snake ever again. Oh. I'm just happy I did not get blasted in the face by those insects. That was fucking disgusting. Zavid is uh, hiding his face um, and like wiping himself down. Uh, but Reese, I think you can see from your vantage point. Yeah. Uh, he is openly crying and trying to hide it. And uh, he gets up and he's like, like, like all right, let me take a look at you, Khan. Um, and uh, I'm going to do a medicine check to treat wounds to heal your uh, broken ribs and shit. Perfect. Go ahead and um, throw that in the chat. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. as you're as you're helping her, she's going to like take off her, her little green cloak uh, and put it over Zavid so he has some he has some shadows. That's cool. Take a hero point for that. I like that a lot. I think I also get a plus two on this uh, with my... Uh, Your uh, Serenite healing tools? Yes. So that's a 41. Yeah. So that's definitely a crit. Uh, so what is that? 40, 4d8 plus... Like I was trying a... to beat the second... Yeah, the next one yeah, up. Yeah, just, uh, yeah. I'm so gonna four. have Reese just try to be helpful. I think it's 48 plus 20 is what it is. Oh god. Ooh. Oh no, that actually does work. That's just enough to get a uh, 2d8 on somebody. There Honestly, that'd probably be best on like you maybe. <laughs> All right, yeah. 42 hit points back to you. Um Yippee. on as I'm uh six hit points back. I've got like yeah. a poultice or something uh and I like press it against the uh the very like hemorrhaged bruised ribs and then I take like a gauze and wrap uh and then um give you something like an anesthetic to chew on so that you're not like in, wincing in pain constantly and that, that'll be my doctor's treatment um and then i'll look at you and i'll say do you do you want the the funky healing i can do that too on top of that i think uh, you know what I'm, i might need that i might need that um been a while. Oh wait, I have soothe. I'm gonna use soothe. Soothe oh, yeah, is way better. Soothe. soothe. I don't need to go through the weirdness. Mm -hmm. to, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll use that. Um, the angels. The angels. Yeah, Khan got her I ass just, kicked. I, <laughs> That's I unusual. Say, kind of with a little bit of like anger. Like that was no angel. It was nothing but the parasite. <sighs> Sorry, I'm tired. It, it uh, got you pretty see. bad. It got us pretty bad, yeah. Um, there we go. Wait, is that no? Sorry, I think that was shift click. My bad. Uh, yeah. My yes. There, there we go. go. Okay. And ooh, I like the the look of it. Yeah. Ooh. Eighty-two. Um, as this magic, uh, this occult magic that is separate from his normal necromantic like Kaburi stuff. This is like shadow magic. He got this from and the shadows stitch together your wounds. Kind of like a person with a gash in their chest, their shadow looks no different. And it's almost like taking that fullness of your shadow and repairing the real you with that. Um, Stitches made out of shadow. 
Yeah. And then for me, I'll do I'll do wonky healing. Uh, so I'll... oh, you're insane, insane healing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I'm. Let's see, sixteen. That's eight. So so high level now. Uh, plus eighty. Oh my god. Plus eighty. Oh my god. So <laughs> eight d ten plus eighty. <laughs> Let's see player. that number. I have never gotten over how weird this is, and I I still feel coolest. to this day like this. Wow, is cool, right? Like it it's shouldn't not. be this powerful, but the rules is like it is. It just is. That brings you down to three wounds. Yep. <laughs> you have a little cut on your cheek. But I you heal, got, but I'm like, you also get a gnarly scar from that because <sighs> you went down far. Yeah, I think I think the the scar is almost like. This thing grabbed me by, like, you know, kind of like, I need a prop or something, but like, like around the torso with its like hand and then like a, the burst of light came from the hand. So like, I've got this stripe looking scar, but when I put my, if I put my arms down and you look, it actually looks like a giant hand had grabbed me. Um, oh, and the scar so cool. is like a, yeah, I have dark, dark skin, but the scar is like, it, it's only visible as like a bumpiness, sort of like a burn scar that's been healed over. So it's like, if you're looking at it, you can see it, but only if you're like looking at a shirtless David, which normally he's covered up. He doesn't usually, he's not going to show that off. He's not very proud of this one. Um, but uh, after he heals, uh, he'll heal Anyanka with the normal spell. Oh um, yeah, she doesn't need Undeath's Blessing. Yeah, and I think he can just get her to full with a regular. I don't need to. I'm sure. Out. No, you don't. If you want to see the numbers, go ahead. But yeah, I'm sure that'll just put her to full. She has 55 wounds. Reese. And it's weird. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go. No, 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 no. Go on. I was gonna just say it's kind of strange for him. He took a bunch of good damage, and he was forced to relive all of the sins, quote unquote, that he had to, you know, that he's done in the past. So he's he felt this overwhelming like remorse and grief and regret. Um, being sort of laid bare with this like good damage and then anger at the fact that this thing isn't even good this thing <laughs> is not an angel and is not fit to judge him because look what it's doing to these creatures it is a parasite itself and so the fact that it could even do this to him leaves him upset so when he heals using his like fell magic he feels good it feels like he's repaired some of himself, even though the magic itself is like evil in nature coming from Cabrera. He doesn't care. He feels whole again in a, in a very weird way um, and protected, uh, despite the fact that like he does realize that like what he did was wrong. But at this point, he's like, I'm not trying to, you know, reflect right now. Like there's bigger things going on. So I'm, I'll if this this evil and this darkness makes me feel good in the moment. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use it. I'm not gonna yeah. worry about it. We'll go yeah. for it. Uh, Reese oh. just kind of looks just like, all right, you guys look a lot better, but I like tried, and I think all I did was clean up my wounds. That fucker scratched me a lot. Stupid little uh, demons. I will, if you want, cast the thing on you and do the weird healing. I don't need that much. So, he I technically has to cast. He has to max cast okay. you, uh, right. and you just go full because you're not even close to thirty-one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think minimum I roll. Just the bonus itself would be enough to heal you. Yeah, so. that's what the I'm bonus like, enough you. was to, enough to heal him almost three times over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're fact, welcome to roll the I numbers would... if you want. No, it's not no need. needed. Uh, it's just ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, Khan, you are now the only one with any appreciable amount of damage. You have 41 wounds, but you have 189 hit points. Yeah, so she'll, you're probably she'll walk okay. it off. She'll walk it off. I imagine yeah. that like most of the bones have been set in place thanks to the magic, so it's just a lot of soreness and bruising. You have a cast yeah. made out of shadows on your yeah. forearm. Yeah, I, since I treat wounds due first, that would probably set everything. And then I just accelerated healing with Soothe. So yeah. it, like, yeah, you should be fine, hopefully. Um, but I guess I'll I'll start oh, so wondering. What do we do this. now? Probably go check on the animals. We gotta wake up these uh, critters. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, hey! And uh, you come I, into the I, glade, and it's exactly like your dreams, Avid. Yeah, I, I I try to ignore how unnerving that is, and I completely ignore the Arc Fay, and I go right to Rupert, and I'm like, Rupert, my buddy, wake up! <laughs> wake up, Rupert! Mount upon hill! 
Get it together. With, with that, I'm going to roll him a will save. Let's see. That is not how Fantasy Grounds works. There we go. Oh, shit. That was really high. Okay. And with, with seeing his name mound upon him, and his, his eyes flutter open. I, I know your face. Speed. Yes. Yes. You uh, have been subject to an animated dream, uh, courtesy of the conjunction. It has uh, tried to feed off of your dreams and nightmares and kept you in a enchanted sleep. This fey lady, I forgot her name, she has been sort of taking care of you with good berries, but she succumbed before we got here. Uh, oh, yes, the arch druid. Uh, what is her name? Aspen Zora. Yes, we, 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 we came here to... To, to make a moot between several of the different circles around the area, and, uh, well, uh, it's a bit fuzzy after that. Uh, wh what's happened here? Well, we killed the thing that was uh, forcing you all to sleep, but I'm going to need you to go around and wake up your friends. Uh, yes, of, uh, of course, can of course. I, can yes. I take some water from the horseshoe crab tank and splash it in the Archdruid's <laughs> face? Yes. <laughs> psh, psh, and that will do it for her. Huh? What? What is? What is going on? You. Grace is gonna poke the bear. <laughs> Literally. Just Literally poke the bear. Bear. And it does. Slowly, it slowly does come to, as his, does the arch druid. In his. Oh, like, the arch druid quickly comes through. In Reese's like uh, half bear talk, like that kind of sounds like a. Like, you have roll me a society check publicly. I realize that when you do that, you have to roll society for it. Oh no! What does my natural I know, it's thirty so huge, bonus? Uh, yeah, but just make that public. Yeah, a skill check. Yeah. S okay. Skill s society. Society. Uh, 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 is kind of like yeah, so, what you hear. Yeah. So you you make a bear. It's like bear common, uh, mm -hmm. where you're you're kind of mixing in what you think bears sound like you've heard bears calls in the woods you know what their growls sound like but you're incorporating that it's very similar to when dory speaks whale like exactly. that's the only example i can come up with this is like dory speaking whale <laughs> and it looks to you and it goes oh it's not cold why are you hibernating bad dream eater oh Dream taste bad. Very. And he just like pets him in the head and walks back over to everyone else. <laughs> yeah, and the uh, arch druid wakes up. I, I know your voice. Hearing Zavid speak. You're the one who found us. Are you not? Yes. Well, it was a group effort, but yes. It was, I mean, if you want to say I'm the one that found you, really, it was, and I just your Khan. Khan was the one that scried on you and found you. Oh, I see. All of you are very powerful. Hey, I, I, I'm so sorry. Allow me to introduce myself properly. I am Archdruid Aspen Zora, uh, the leader of the oh, I had it. The, the awake, the circle of the awakened dream druids. Uh, but apparently, I was overpowered by this creature. Thank you for coming to our aid. That thing was nasty. Too much about it. it was very bad, yes. I'm just going to slowly remove these speech bu this, these sleeping bubbles, as I assume you're kind of slowly waking each of them up. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll, uh, I would like to do a medicine. I don't know if you need me to make the checks individually for everybody, but basically no. I want to double check everybody and make sure they don't have any injuries or maladies that need yeah go ahead and make a uh, medicine check publicly now it'll just be for like the group sure okay oh, that's pretty good oh 40 wow yeah they don't really seem to be injured uh although even though they've been sleeping all of them look very exhausted as though they have not slept in days especially the uh the arch they didn't get rem sleep technically. yeah exactly all they, yeah. exactly all of the dreams re that's 100 percent it with that role you know that yeah they just they haven't gotten they're all exhausted like mechanically exhausted uh 
and we'll just, they'll need to sleep it off, essentially. They just need to take a few days, sleep it. Mm -hmm. Sleep, they'll be fine. All right. Uh, Y'all are going to be fine after you get some rest. Um, Just be wary of the uh, conjunction. This is a bit of a... Can I actually figure out what caused this? Yes. Based on what we've Uh, seen. I'm I'm making guesses here, but I don't know. Roll me a religion check in the tower. All right. Ooh, that was really good. It finally pieces together for you. You read some obscure text from some ages ago. Strange village up in the far east. You don't even remember the name. Where... The strong heroes of their their mythic heroes were cursed with sleep and their vicious dreams would attack the village. And what they call, they managed eventually they were able to take down the creatures and wake the heroes and things went back to normal. But they called it the Sinosure Rupture. Which with that role, you know that the Sinosure is the homeland of desna goddess of dreams Mm. so there is a rupturing of the walls between the land of dreams and the material plane you know i know sure rupture i have one more call i would like to make sure now correct me if i'm wrong but was wasn't elvish presley uh or whatever his name was (laughs) wasn't he a desna devotee he was, but the seer of Desna is Pembroke Wessel. The, right, uh, that's no. Okay, but yes. Yeah, but Elvis, <laughs> I can't get out of my head the Elvish Presley. Uh, yeah. he, he, he was a he was a fraudster. He called himself the champ. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, a, he I was a, yes. I like uh, subconsciously am about to call him. I'm like, oh, what am I thinking? Uh, <laughs> call, uh, yes, our Pembroke Penny Whistle yes. guy, the Swerf Neblin. Uh, he pops up on your hollow, hollow speakerphone. Yeah, yes. Oh, Javid. Yes, sir. Ah, ah, ascending. Yes, sir. I, I've heard yes. of this spell before. He doesn't see yeah. anything, but he can kind of feel you. Uh, yes, I've, I know of the sending spell. Ah, uh, uh, what can I do for you, Javid? Yes. Well, so uh, you might be interested to know that there's been a sinusure rupture. His face drops. I see. We just fought and slayed an enemy dream of our nightmares. I have been permanently scarred by a kind of damage that a nightmare should not have access to. It was very powerful, and it affected very powerful druids uh, in a glade that we have thankfully purged of this. But after doing some thinking, it made me remember Desna's profile and you being her chosen. Need to know that this is yes. Happening. Yes, the signs that make sense. I have dreamt of uh, my dreams have been strange as late, but yes, a sign of sure rupture that it has been uh, many, many years. And he starts. You can hear Page, or you know, you can see him. You see him flipping through that book that he has on him, and says, "I will. I will need to look into this. Uh, I'll have Penny look uh, through through the the telescope again and work with the swarm to just to see what we can figure out." Thank you. This is very vital, pertinent information. You should know that before. We arrived here, we each dreamed of a different aspect of this place. It led us here. Just the three of us, not our friend Anyanka, not that she's revealed to us, um, and the Nightmare Amalgam was of our fears. Do you think that there is some sort of connection between us and this rupture? Well, the three of you are, are very powerful, and, and you have been walking the paths of your gods. Perhaps you have been pulling the lady's dreams from the Sinoshore. Ah, when the ruptures happen, they manifest through powerful people, usually wizards, druids, things of this nature. But all three of you are po- very powerful in your own right. I would be wary of your dreams. Pay very close attention. They uh, may portent things to come. Uh, but... I, I must go. Uh, I meant me, me, much to research, yes. But th- thank you for this information. Uh, th- this will be most useful. Um, is there anything else I can answer for you? Yes. Why do Nightgaunt tickle us? 
That's a very strange question. Uh, I, it, it seems that they, they mostly feed upon the, the dreams of children, and when children are tickled in their sleep, it is enough to trigger their brain reactions, but not enough to wake them. Disturbing. Yes, they, they tend to feed upon children's dreams. Children have the most intense physical manifestation in their dreams. Uh, they, they do not like eating the dreams of adults, as adults tend to dream of more abstract concepts, like uh, taxes or dying alone. <laughs> it is very difficult to manifest physically on the physical plane. No, no, concrete, if one were to um... illustrate them in the <laughs> In order to illustrate <laughs> them physically, in a, a visual manner. <laughs> Makes sense. All right, well, I'll let you go. Thank uh, you yes. for the advice. And, uh, Thank you for the information. I'm figuring out what happened. Yes, I will get back to work immediately. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here, click. <laughs> I'm like, well, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't. He's not one for small talk, so I appreciate that. Uh, it is so good that you came when you did. Uh, how can we ever repay you? I mean, you did. You did fine. You kept. Our buddy alive, uh, mound, mound, uh, upon, mound upon hill, right? Mm -hmm. Rupert to mound upon hill, yes. Uh, mound upon hill is uh, kind of my bro. I mean, you know, we haven't have had a hangout sesh, but like, we've known each other for a while. Um, and uh, cracking good chap, and he jumps up and yeah. like climbs up on your shoulder. I don't know what I'd do if something happened to him before we even got to the final battle. I'm, I'm willing to, you know put everyone's lives on the line here to save the world, so I understand if someone is a casualty of that, that's tragic, but that's expected. But beforehand, I don't know what I'd done with myself if something happened to him before then. Oh, thank you, good chap. Reese good just, show! I'm putting, I'm putting over to Khan of, and like, just goes... I'm kind of... Sorry. Oh, no. Reese just bends <laughs> over to say, Khan I'm and... I'm pumping up his ego a little bit, but mm -hmm. I don't... I, Sabine doesn't feel that strong about Rupert, but he's more just like... Trying to let Rupert know that we 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 care about you, you know. Okay, so Reese kind of like bends over to Khan. And is just like he is more adorable than you guys even could describe. Do you not just want to hug him all the time? Uh, I I respect his personal boundaries. It's not so hard. Please. Yeah, that's valid. And Reese you're, is just kind of like looking at him, just like in you know, like awe. a rodent person about why you don't go hugging another rodent person. Yeah, and it's like it's the I don't understand. I don't I guess understand. Not <laughs> like your cousin. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Reese wouldn't actually say that. Yeah, but oh having listened to this and seeing you interact with Rupert and having saved all of them, the Archdruid Asp uh, Aspens looks at you and says. Well, we had gathered here to discuss the recent events, the sky changes, as we've been calling them. You call it this conjunction, yes? Mm -hmm. We came yeah, here boy. to this. We came here to decide what, 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 figure out what to do, what is going on. Thank you for this. I will research this. Uh, but, and I'll write down. I'll write down the combos that we just learned mm, about on the mm -hmm, pamphlet. Sure. Extra information. Perfect. Perfect. And she looks and says, hey, this information is vital, but I think I speak for all of us when I say the druids of all circle are behind you in this. And each of the animals stands at attention, hoofed to the ground, and you see a cloud of dirt kick up, and even the tree creature shakes it, shakes its leaves. And then and Rupert says, Power Ranger transformation. <laughs> that would be awesome. Power of the elk, power of the bear. <laughs> <laughs> Get a sword that's shaped like one of the animals. <laughs> Rupert oh, leans to you. <laughs> Rupert leans over to you, Zavid, and says, There has not been an all circle called in many, many millennia. This will be a very dangerous time, friend. Thank you for coming to our aid. You're very welcome. And I think this is probably where we're going to stop today. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. So we'll kind of hand wave you getting back on the wind seeker uh, and getting on your way. And I think starting next time, what some cold ones. I cold ones. You guys, you guys kicked some this, ass. You point. earned it. God damn I think yeah. you earned some fucking cold ones. So next time, thank you everyone for joining us. We'll be going to Fogton to get some cold ones. Uh, and then going to go on a there, date. 
Reese and Carl are going to go on a date, and we're going to go to the Northlands. Hope you'll join us. Ta for now. Bye. 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 Bye.